We are Legends of Evantress. This is The Edge of Midnight, and we will see you in the mist. long last against the longest nine, the long lives of our weary protagonists, the crooked half stands crooked no more. The one crooked thing in body and spirit flies through the night sky toward destinations unknown. Where she's going and what she's planning now that she's finally free from that amber prison, well, that's a story for another time. Now, the path lies ahead with the Lord of the Land. And of course, what good man wasn't backed up by a good woman? This kind of true love you don't see very often. And when you do, it's real and it's strong. Strong enough to weather the horrors of this dark land. But the question remains, are heroes? And as you slowly come to consciousness, you abruptly open your eyes. The sound, the clopping of hooves, shaking the ground beneath your heads as you've all found sleep outside of the crooked house. As your eyes flutter awake, you see the rolling of the spokes of the wheels of the black carriage as it rolls to a stop before you. The sounds of Adela's voice, who you haven't met, but you can immediately imagine who this is as she begins to spout off her proclamations about the ghosts and the spirits in this house. It takes a bit, but you are able to fully come to consciousness and really understand the things that she's saying as she looks down at all of you. Oh my god, I just can't! Oh, you're so cute! He's a freaking scarecrow, Philip! Look at him! Look at him! He's all tatted and raggedy! You guys look great, covered in muck and all of that stuff! I can't even believe it! Oh, hi! I'm Adela Druskenfold. It's so nice to meet you. Philip, Philip, get out of the carriage! And you see as she smacks her arm into the carriage, and you see Philip's cane emerge first, his dark black boots shining in the pale light of the early morning. But it's more like a dusk, the very beginnings of an evening in this strange land. As he slowly makes his way out of the carriage. You see as he snakes his arm around Adela's tiny waist and pulls her in close to him as he pops out of the carriage, carrying her with him. And with love in his eyes, he looks to his wife and smiles down at her as he slowly places her softly on the ground next to him. And he looks at all of you. Well, it looks like you've uh, been in quite the proper caper. Adela, dear. You know what you need to do. We've got to do whatever it is that you do with this house and get all the spirits and the ghosts and make them leave. Make this a proper house for our friends. Oh, I'll do it, Philip. You know I will. I brought, oh, I brought my pendulum. So if anything remains, I'll know they're here. And I got my sage. Oh, we've got to go through every single room. This is going to be so much fun. Who wants to come with me? Do you want to come with me? Oh, you need to eat, honey. Do you know? What was in that house? You are falling apart, but I mean that in the best way possible. Can I touch you for just a minute? Do you have any teeth? 
Do we're I in a house? Teeth? Oh, I got pearly whites, honey. And she smiles. Her her teeth glint in the pale moonlight that's rising above you. Beautiful, pristine teeth. Well, uh, uh, it, 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 my name is old, old Jericho Sticks, but you can call me Jericho. Most folk do. It is quite an honor to meet such a fine and high noble type lady. Oh, I like you a lot. You can talk to me as much as you want. Oh, gosh, I've never had any kind of noble lady so that I was allowed to talk to him. Oh, Tom, did you hear that? He called me a noble lady. How cute. We think that you'll find that house is pretty well empty at this point. Empty of what? Ghosts and like that. Oh, that's such a bummer. Philip, you promised I'd get to see a ghost. And you see as she pouts, she looks adorable. Her cheeks puffy, her face rosy. She looks like she's baking sad, but she's clearly very pleased with this situation. As Philip walks up behind her, he wraps his arms around her, he squeezes her. And he whispers something into her ear. You can see as she rolls her eyes and she looks up towards the house. Well, you know, you're right, honey. There might be something in there for me to find. There is one creature left. And I suggest we <clears throat> use caution. It's escaped in the walls. Oh, you don't say. What kind of creature? Tell me about it. You're Marius, right? You're the dampier I've heard all about you. And I... I ain't never seen a dampier in the flesh before. Can I see your fang? Uh, I am, from from about here down, I am drenched in dark, deep blood. My my blonde <laughs> hair from the tips is soaked in blood. It's essentially a dark brown now. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Would it be, would it be weird if I asked you if I could touch him? Yes. Can I do it anyway? No. I'm gonna do it. Can I touch him? I need to wash. I am sullied. Oh, not a problem. And she snaps her fingers and prestidigitations, and you feel yourself completely clean. Ah. Oh, look at you. You look dapper as can be. Ah. You look good in one of Philip's suits. You're like roughly the same size, kind of. A little shorter, but that's fine. Um, th- th- thank you. Oh, that, you're welcome. That's a nice trick. Can oh, you it do... ain't no trick. It's magic, honey. Can you do teeth? <laughs> uh, smile. <laughs> Except from oh, missing <laughs> Come here, come here, come here. And she rushes, she, she rushes over to you. And she puts her hands on your face. This might sting a little bit. Actually, I don't know. And she begins to cast some kind of magic. This soft light, um, almost like a silver, emanates from her hands as you feel your teeth slowly start to play back in the And it is very painful. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're welcome anytime. You know, you know, I always was always a little bit uh, envious of you, you uh, uh, living people type folk, uh, with, with your teeth and all. But I, after the past twenty four hours, I'm rather fortunate. I'm grateful I don't got no teeth. Well, you were mentioned, Mary, is something about a creature or something in the house. You want to tell me more about it? Yes, it was some sort of horrific abomination. Of oh, you don't say. Man and weasel. <gasps> really. I believe how big it, was it? His name is Filthy Jasper. I, I I don't know. I use my hands to describe how big it is. I forget. What you said. It's I mean, roughly it? the size of a pug. Uh, oh, okay. So it's a little smaller than I was thinking, yeah. but still. I don't know why that pine. makes it worse. Yeah. <laughs> quite, quite frankly, if it, were, if it were up to me, we'd burn that house to the ground, smoke him out. Oh, you don't want to do that, honey. This is a great place for you guys to live. I'm going to, I promise you, I'm going to get everyone I possibly can to come and help me. We're going to fix this place right up. Are, It'll be beautiful when we're done with it. Are you fully aware of the horrors that have happened here? I mean, I'm, I wouldn't say a bird necessarily, but there's been something in my ear telling me about what's going on. And when I say something, I mean Philip, because he knows everything. So he know. Is he there? He's standing behind her. He's got his hand on her shoulder. Was well, this some kind of trick? Are you sure this isn't thinking, oh, here's a house you can stay in. It can be yours. Nobody's been there. And you knew the fucking horrors that were in, that were in there? He, he chuckles as he squeezes Adela's shoulder. I told you the place was haunted. 
I didn't know how haunted it was. I mean, I've seen haunted. That is so far beyond haunted that it, it transcends haunted. Did you know and what was in the basement or underneath it? There was something in the basement or underneath it. I only got a little bit of information. I came today because I've got some news about Cyril, and I was hoping that you could tell me what happened to you. We almost lost our lives. You don't say! Your whole lives, all of them? Yes, the haunting was very serious. Oh, tell me all about it. I would, but I've been very quiet. <laughs> You've really just been either quiet or saying something cryptic about Shaw. Right? <laughs> oh, is there something cryptic you can tell me about Shaw? I don't know much about it, but I'd like to learn. We do you have a pamphlet or something I could read up on? No, we do not distribute pamphlets. I think your witch problem has extended to your doorstep. Oh, honey, this one. This wasn't a witch. I heard all about it. She's a hag. Hags aren't witches. Oh. Whatever she was, she got out. Yeah, the witch problem's in Cyril. It's horrible. Well, that's it's good news that we were able to handle a hag, and they're much worse than witches, right? No, actually, they're significantly <laughs> less worse than witches. Honestly, but you know, it's a good oh. sign. If you can handle a hag, you're at least part of the way there towards handling a full-fledged witch. I touch my new teeth, like, oh. <laughs> 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 well, it, so, so you're saying that there is a real genuine witch? Oh, yeah. Mother Midnight's definitely been terrorizing Cyril. So how far away is Cyril from here? It's probably going to take about a day's travel, but you look hardy. You can easily make it. So I guess my question is, should we head out immediately? Or do oh, we need no. to deal with Filthy Jasper first? Oh, Filthy Jasper's that weird, strange thing that's about this big that's got a human face. It's, it's a gross animal if I ever saw oh, one. I I've seen a lot. I can't to see it. I really want to see it, Marius. Will you show it to me? I mean, I, I certainly intend to find it. Uh, we can't let it live. No. Yes, it is a serious beast. And anything that you can do to undo the terrible deeds and hauntings that have occurred in this place. We tried to do our very best to cleanse it, but it is oh, impossible I'll do, to know for sure. I'll do whatever I can, I promise. When I go inside, I'll sage the place. I'll, I'll bring in people to repaint. We'll, we'll put down new flooring. We'll, we'll put up some really fancy drapes. I'm talking the fanciest of the fanciest drapes. Oh my gosh. You'll have to fix the stairs. You know, I have a feeling oh, this yeah, place has got good bones. Yeah, those took care of the stairs. Gosh, that was, those weasels really did not number on it. Those stair-eating weasels. Oh, no. The, there were weasels in there that were eating your stairs? There were, there, were, there were weasels eating the stairs, and we put a stop to them. Well, I'm glad you were able to put a stop to it. I'm not sure what we can do. We might have to make completely new stairs. And as she's saying this, Philip puts his hand on her shoulder again and squeezes it. You know, honey, I think it's time that I start talking to the friends here. We've got uh, things to talk about. There's something going on, you said, in the foundation. I need to hear about it. There's something going on in the foundation, the foundation of anything. Philip needs to know about it. Philip and foundation, they go together. I suppose it would just be easier to show you. Well, I know my wife here wants to go inside, so there's no reason I can't. Let's do it. Yes, please join us, and we will take you down into the basement. And as we go, you might as well tell me what happened here. I know a little bit of the story, but not all. So we're saying we're going to go back in there when there's a, a horrible monster weasel creature that dug halfway through your groom's chest. Brixby, <laughs> <laughs> the real danger is over. There are still threats, but I am confident with our allies we will be safe. All right, well. And I feel much better <coughs> dealt with it before leaving soon. I mean, I'll, I'll get that. I'm just saying it. Well, man, I want to stand in the middle so that nothing bites the back of my neck or my heels or any of that. Well, especially if, if, if Lady Lady Druskenwald here is going to go through the trouble of hiring some contractors. We don't want no gross animal digging through their chest cavity. <laughs> contractors ain't cheap. That's exactly right. <laughs> especially reliable ones. I'll, I'll go first. He's already got a taste for my flesh. I'll, uh, I'll stay, once we start going in the house, I'll stay in the middle of the game <clears throat> as closely as I'll possible. I'll just be next to Yorgrim, I guess, and <laughs> help him lead. 
Well, it was a dark and stormy night, and I know that seems a little cliche. <laughs> oh, but it, it was, was the yesterday. Truth. It really was. It really That's was. true. It seemed eerily like like it was almost came on as soon as we entered the house. It was almost like we, like someone knew that we were going to be assaulted by gross animals and ghosts. Like who? Who knew? Who knew? Uh, who knows? I liked your story. Well, anyways, we and then I'll. <laughs> and there's the parlor where we had a spirit board and we talked to the the ghost of the butler named Petrini, and and your room decided to chop it in half. Oh, no, your room. Why would you chop a spirit board in half? You know what that means. Bad luck. Does it? I think so. I don't. I don't know actually, but yeah, I think so. It sounds like bad luck. You, you were know. almost entirely consumed by a small weasel man. I'm not sure my luck could have gotten any worse. <laughs> You'll roll at disadvantage for the remainder of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, Petunia! <laughs> Well, anyway, it was all of this Lady Petunia, and she had this strange sense of uh, style, if you could even call it that, and she was serving some nasty old night hag named uh, Vesla Browntooth. And she was feeding her, or something, teeth. And there's a gross aminal. Oh, and then there's a beaver on a clock that our friend Briggsy is quite fond of. <laughs> I've never seen a beaver in real life before. (laughs) Is that what one actually looks like? I don't think we have beavers around here. Philip, do we have beavers around here? Doesn't matter. I'll ask. Adulto, do not eat this fruit. Oh, I don't want to. Oh, that's a bergamot. I like the tea from that stuff. I have tea with my breakfast every morning. Uh, I did not think you said tea right away. (laughs) (laughs) Don't don't have any. I promise you will only have a bad time. Well, you'll have both. I'm not sure you're supposed to eat the the fruit of a bergamot tree. I think you're just supposed to suck the essential oils from it and use it to infiltrate the tea leaves. So you have a very aromatic flavor when you're drinking the tea in the morning. You can add a little bit of cream, but some people don't like that. They say it's not true to the way it's supposed to be, but I love adding cream to my tea. I am not familiar with this tree, but... And I will... Is there a remaining fruit? Sure. Can I try to split it open and see what's inside? Yes. I do that. And it is a plump, fresh, juicy fruit. I don't know, that looks super ripe to me. This is a very good sign, actually. In the evening, this would have been filled with teeth. Oh, I wish it were. That would be so spooky, you know? Well, I think we've had enough spooky for for a week. I'm glad that all the spookiness in this land is behind us, certainly. (laughs) Tell her about kick. Kellen of the Crooked Teeth. Oh, oh yeah, tell me about Kellen of the Crooked Teeth. Oh yes, so so the the whole thing is that this there was this uh, entity named Kellen. She had a mighty, a tra- handsome voice, I might say. <laughs> oh yeah, what did it sound like? If you could describe potentially three things that sounded like mixed together, what would those three things oh, be? Oh well, uh, I well, what did she sound like? Well, hey, um, um, Farron, could you say, uh, how do you do, Miss? Uh, I mean, Lady uh, Druskenval? <laughs> She sounded a little bit like that. <laughs> well, that's not three things mixed together. That's just Farron. <clears throat> well, you had to be you know there. I, how do you know it wasn't Farron projecting a voice? Well, gosh, I don't, I, I don't know, but Farron was standing there, and there was that she was in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, an amber thing, a rock. You say an amber, an amber thing, an amber rock? What, what do you mean? Oh, yeah, no, it was a big old, it was a hunk of amber. One might even call it a monolith. Hmm. That is uh, something to think about. Yeah, Jericho, that is something to think about. And you can see that Philip looks a little perturbed by you saying this. And, and uh, Marius's uh, lady friend, uh, she she decided to, uh, to 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 break to crack it, and then I got real feared. Oh, Marius! And I and I, and I broke it a little bit too. And then I think that she may have flown away as a horrible kind of uh, spooky shadow with crooked teeth after we did the whole thing. That sounds so cool. You guys must have had the best night of your life. That's a lot to do in one night. Uh, as I narrow my eyes at Jericho, <laughs> what Jericho is trying to say is that this amber appeared to be some sort of a prison. We may have incidentally, by accident, released it. Well, I can't speak to that. I've never released anything from a prison before or put anything into a prison. That's nice. good to know. <laughs> <laughs> Philip, <clears throat> Philip, is... What? Are these, uh, are amber statues or, or monoliths uh, common 
in just a while. I wouldn't say they're coming, but it's definitely something that I need to see with my own eyes. I've heard of something that could that could utilize Amber to trap things and evil beings and such, but I'm going to need to see this thing. Well, I've got my sus- suspicions. I've got my fears. I've got things I'm afraid of right now. But to confirm it, we're going to have to see it. Isn't that right, Adele? And she just nuzzles into him. Oh, that's so right, honey. Then follow us down into the winery. Oh, did you hear that? They're going to give us wine. Oh, I love this. It's like a tasting. <laughs> if you see a, uh, a little treat, Despite how appetizing and, and confectionary it might seem, I wouldn't try tasting it. Are you, are you sure? I'm really peckish. I haven't eaten all day. Well, they explode. And they're Don't also they're also made of children's bones, too. You know? <laughs> oh, that too. <laughs> That's the worst part of it. <laughs> the I was part. getting that. <laughs> Give me a minute. <laughs> his teeth are still growing back, to be fair. You might want to give him more time to finish his sentences. Thank you. You poor thing, your grim. How do they feel? Your gums still bleeding, honey? That's a bit like when your baby teeth grow in and they're still falling. It's really horrible. <laughs> yeah, it totally looks that way. And she reaches into a pocket on the side of her dress and she pulls out a dainty little lace handkerchief and she wipes some of the blood off the side of your mouth. Uh. You poor thing. They, they will stop growing when they reach their proper size, correct? Oh, I hope so. I've never done that spell before. I guess we'll see. You <laughs> have <laughs> 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 You read. <laughs> oh, I, I read it in a book. That's so cool. Well, that's a little suspicious the way you said that. <laughs> I don't know why you'd be suspicious about reading beaver facts. <laughs> well, anyway, that apron right there next to all the splinters of wood from a voodoo gun is uh, <laughs> is the apron of the old butler Petrini, what I just mentioned. Oh, that Petrini guy? That's the one that was talking to you on the spirit board that this guy broke with his shovel and is now okay. split in twine that's and probably correct. has bad luck for the rest of his whole life? By the way, you're going to roll a disadvantage for the rest of the campaign? <laughs> I suppose, yeah. No, that oh, was he, yeah, he was very helpful. He told us about uh, uh, Kellen in, in the in the amber monolith. Uh, he told us about uh, the hag who lived in the attic. He had a journal. He had a journal that, that also t- talked to us. He basically Can saved I our lives. That? Can I see that journal? We still have yes, it. Yes, it's right here. Oh, great. I'm going to take a look at it. Of course. While we're walking, of course. <laughs> we owe Petrini a lot. I, I can't imagine what he went through to get us that information from the other side. I can't imagine what it would be like to talk to a real, true life spirit. Can you say true life spirit? Is that, is that a faux pas? It's a bit offensive, yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, Oh, Jorgen would know. Those are his best pals. They don't like oh, that. No. I we, won't say it again. I'm sorry. I'd, ra- I'd rather have a best pal that's a ghost than more Virgil here. <laughs> Despite the evils we faced, we were very lucky when we engaged with the spirit board. I know that uh, attempting to talk beyond. So why'd you smash it then? You didn't. You didn't have a say. If I'd had my wits about me, I would have stopped him from smashing the spirit board. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he was just really busy saying creepy things. Without I just can't stop. <laughs> 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 well, no, his, and you, you can't blame Jorgrim. His mind wasn't his own. It was the the, the specter of Petunia Lockwood. That was her name. Oh, don't you dare tell me you were possessed by a spirit. My hands were the tools of an evil being. I am going to touch you, if that's all right. I... Why? <laughs> well, is it all right or not? Well, I'd like to know why. Because I really want to touch someone who's been possessed by a spirit, Philip, can I? I mean, can I? Fine. <laughs> she, she, like, dances Shut up to you and she pre- puts her hand on your chest. Uh, Holy smokes, Philip is a real-life possessed person. And that's okay, though, because you're not dead, right? Okay, that's enough. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yikes. 
<laughs> Go right ahead, Adela. <laughs> keep touching people. That's fine. I don't give a shit. <laughs> well, gosh, I, I get possessed all the time. <laughs> so you really? Oh, can I touch you too? I wish that was me. <laughs> I think that he may actually be possessed at this very moment. You are so joshing me right now. Do you think you could Oh, no, be? I, I got possessed all the time. I mean, I'm not everyone, even going to ask. And she everyone. runs up and wraps her arms around Ooh. you. Oh, my gosh. You are seriously completely empty. No, Virgil, 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 go. Get away. This is finally, finally someone who is not scared away by you. It's happening. <laughs> you know what? You smell a little bit, bit like rust and a little bit like what? I kind of like it. Yeah, I, I've been a little rusty. You know I try to I try to scrape it off it every couple weeks. It would make a great incense. Let me tell you, I make incense in my free time. I'm gonna make some, and I'm gonna call it Jericho. Gosh, that do you is like the, that because I do. That is the nicest thing anyone's oh, ever said no, to me. I just love them. Where'd you find them? You hear that, Virgil? I could make a great incense. You always said I'd make a terrible incense. <laughs> some of your hay came out. Oh, so, sorry about oh, can that. Can I have some of that? I could add it to the incense. Oh, well, well, sure, I mean, I don't got a ton on my, I get a little skinny if I, I can get more hay. <laughs> Here, do, do, do you need some more? No, this is enough, I don't want to take all your pieces. I just don't want to, uh, I don't want to take them from my legs and people will accuse me oh, of no, skipping leg day. <laughs> well, your legs are already a bit scrawny, darling. Well, I mean, is, have you ever tried to work your legs? It's difficult. Jericho, Jericho is a so barge from the College of Chunder. <laughs> all of you. You're my favorite. I'm so glad we met. And it's so cool that you got to have this amazing adventure in what's going to be your new house. We are indeed well met, Adela. It is a pleasure. Oh. Hmm. This isn't going to be our house until we know that Kellen is gone and that Filthy Jasper is dead. And you you hear Philip uh, <coughs> make a, a sound in the back of his throat. All right, honey, I think you've had enough time torturing our new friends. Oh, no, you can... Oh, okay. <laughs> and she, she, like, shrinks back into him. All right, I'll be quiet for a little bit. And uh, he moves forward, and I got a lot to think about. A lot to think about. And it sounds like you have a vermin problem. This weasel with a human-headed face. As far as I would know, he's not dead. If that's your problem, then I'm your man. I was hoping that a vermin problem that uh, started with W would be for witches. But if it's for weasels, then we'll deal with it. Oh, <laughs> would that be mighty kind of you? We, we've been trying to, 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 to get him every time we've run into him, but he's been real slippery, ain't he? He yes. just gets away before we can do nothing. It's very fast. They don't call me put a stop to it, Philip, for no reason. And everybody calls me that. Oh, put oh, a stop honey, to it, Philip? I should that. write a jingle for that. Do you need anyone to write you a jingle? Oh, I would love it if you wrote him a jingle. Could you write him a theme song? Because I've always said what would be really cool when we walk in for the masquerade, if all of a sudden the band started playing and then Philip puts his hand over her mouth, she's going to be fine. Just let her keep talking. As long as she can hear herself speak, she's good to go. <laughs> Honey, I love you, but you got to be quiet. Stay here with a spirit board. <laughs> Once we show you what's been going on in this house, if we run into Filthy Jasper, if you have any way to stop him from getting back into the walls, the rest of us will turn him into red mist. I love it. Let's deal with the weasel problem. We'll put a stop to the vermin. One of us should stay here if you intend to go down and view the Ember Monolith. Sure, who wants to stay? Just to protect your wife. Oh no, he told me I can't go down there, but he's full of crap, because I'm totally going down to wherever this thing is. Oh, and yeah. you see he rolls his eyes, but he is not going to put up, up a fight with her. Very good. Let me lead the way. Oh, and this was what uh, the ruins of something called the old bone grinder with the old crooked man that's told us once. Oh, that's really cool. What's a bone grinder? Oh, I don't know. I thought you might know. Oh, you mean like a place that actually grinds bones? Like the pastries we mentioned. Oh, no. You think they're linked together? I feel pretty certain of it, yeah. Well, it was uh, a windmill. You know that. Well, I, mean, I know this place was built on a sturdy foundation. I know that's why Junior Lockwood chose it. Why put more money into building a foundation when there's a sturdy one already here? Well, <clears throat> perhaps on account of the horrible entity trapped in an amber beneath the foundation. That does sound like a very horrible choice. But who could have known? Am I right? But you've relinquished the uh, the thing. You've 
cracked the code, as it were. Well, we may have released the entity. I don't know if we solved any. Yeah, we haven't been down there since it, tr- it tried to attack us and swallow us into uh, goopy red goo. It's like the land before time. <laughs> you don't know say. You haven't been down there since. <laughs> Not since we killed uh, the hag, no. He Unless anyone else went down there. his arm around Adela's waist and he pulls uh-huh. her very close to him. You stay close to me, honey. Just in case things get out of hand, I need to make sure that you're in hand. There's gonna be a bit of a climb. <laughs> Oh, that's all right. I'll be, I'll be fine. And Philip's a good climber, I think. You're gonna climb it. You need to change your shoes, Philip. You're gonna get those all messy. Don't worry about it, honey. I got more shoes in the carriage. <clears throat> well, uh, here's some some dancing lights. Go ahead and dance, pumpkins. And oh, uh, I like those. Quite flavorful. Let's uh, let let's go on down. And anyone smell pumpkin spice? Oh, that, well, oh, I've been trying to get him scented. Is that is it working? Y'all smell it? <laughs> well, I can. I don't have a nose, so I mean, I, get, I can just get little little whiffs of things. It's very thick. I could use less pumpkin spice. Okay. Oh, gosh, I just made it stronger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are descending, and uh, Marius, yes. oh, look how the Marius can just walk down the walls there. <clears throat> oh, my gosh, that's so cool. I knew DMP is Winnie. I've heard of him. I've read about him in books. Maybe Briggsy's read the same books that I have. Well, Probably. I mean, that's right. You go ahead and climb down. I'm going to go down the hard way. And she snaps her fingers and you see as a swirling magical disc begins to appear beneath her with these um, beautiful runic symbols. And she slowly starts to float up into the air and then hover over and lower herself down. Cancer, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna stay with you. I'm just gonna jump in the hole, and then right when I'm towards the bottom, I'm just gonna like blink and use Misty Step to like not break your to, legs to not die. Yeah. <laughs> no, your momentum oh, continues when you wow. Misty Step. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna like fall and then like Misty yeah. Step. <laughs> 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 like you cry on like. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> like a burlap sack full of vegetable soup. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. We, we all make it down in the most dramatic and creepy way. Yes. I'm going to jump down like a mountain goat, kind of landing on like precariously small ledges. Oh. And, and you, you all, like in your lab. own, in your individual ways, you make it down the ruins of the Tower of Old Bone Grind. We're all totally unique. Badass. We're all individuals. <laughs> We're all unique. We're all very special. We are the world. <laughs> The bones of children. <laughs> <laughs> wow. As you, as you, and caprice. As you make it down, you your eyes slowly adjust to the darkness with the help of the dancing lights of the pumpkins. And you begin to see that this place is very similar to what it had been. The walls and the floor are still coated in that thicky gum-like texture, but it's slowly mm-hmm. receding as it's drying up and the the blood is beginning to congeal and actually start to um, start to uh, not petrify but um, rot a foul smell is lingering in the air um, and you see in the very center where the amber monolith had been in a much shallower pool of gum blood you see the shards of the amber monolith and that strange, dark, twisting entity that had been Helen of the Crooked Teeth is nowhere to be seen. I raise my arm, <clears throat> pointing towards it, and say, uh, that is where the entity was. I figured it was some sort of prison because physically it couldn't get to us and it kept taunting us, asking for our help, lend, wanted to lend us its power. No, say. It unfortunately took over my mind <clears throat> and I was drawn into the puddle, lake, something stopped it from claiming me entirely. I think that was Yorgrim. <clears throat> Yorgrim ultimately did save my life. You know, Maris, I think I you might be him. right. I think it might be just that prison of Amber. I've heard of things like this. Amber sarcophagi can keep trapped dark entities, entities within. <clears throat> and somehow, it escaped. Yes, and as you can see, the, uh, perhaps, my hypothesis is that this was the place of power that drew the hag and drew all of this evil to this place. The I source. don't think you're wrong. 
I actually think you are the opposite. I think you're right. That's a very convoluted mm-hmm. way of saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Why, thank you, Leprechaun. Have yes. you seen this before? I haven't seen one personally, but I've heard of them. A library's massive. It's large. It's immense. It's big. Well, when we killed it's your It's filled hag, with books. Um, that sounds Any lovely. book you could possibly imagine is probably in a library. When we killed the hag... We and were... I haven't read all of them, but I have read one that, that talks sounds... about monoliths like this. Oh, sounds great. I can't wait to hear more about it. When we killed the hag... Prisons. We heard... A, entities a, that are a, a incredibly loud powerful. cracking sound. But, and the house kind of like... It was all crooked before, and it kind of righted itself. But I'm wondering if the cracking noise we heard was was actually this, and I kind of gesture to the pieces. Well, Briggsy, I don't think you're wrong. I think you're the exact opposite. I think you might be right. <laughs> uh, well, uh, is there anything we can do about it? Or did we actually do worse <laughs> by killing the hag? Like, had we just not stopped and stepped into this house, uh, that thing would still be imprisoned. I don't know. But I will get to the bottom of it, and I will find out. Uh, is this a class? You don't need to raise your hand? Oh, excuse me. Well, normally amongst nobles, I have something to raise your hand to speak. I'm like looking away and not maintaining eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. You may, you may speak. Oh, uh, well, my name is Jerry. Uh, uh, I guess I'll get to the point, and to my question, uh, which I'll speak very presently. Uh, the, the the nature of what what fabulous prize you offered me, uh, in, 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 as far as uh, th- thanks for, for my, my witch-killing services, uh, was, was a key made of, of a- amber. You're right you are. What do you, is it similar in, in nature and property? I think it might be something to keep something at bay, trapped, contained, imprisoned, locked away. Oh, that's probably a good thing. Yo, know, that sounds like it's very similar. And so back Definitely. to your question, for example. I think that it is possible to use something like this to channel power in a different way. And my fear is that what they that's what this hag was doing. Utilizing whatever rituals or dark deeds this person was, was doing to channel the power from this into them. So you might have released Kellen of the Crooked Teeth, but you stopped something much bigger. That's oh. at least my thought, or well, my hope. Well, I don't know if we mentioned there was, uh, when we fought in the attic, there was uh, a naked lady who didn't have a head. Uh, and there was, was a goat. Petunia. That was Petunia, yes, exactly. It was the lady who what did all this nasty business. And uh, she cut off her own head, I guess, on purpose. I know we saw it on purpose. Now we don't. Yes, we know. And uh, it was on a stake, uh, and the, a wooden stake, not a not a, a, a filet mignon. Uh, <laughs> God, I'm so hungry. I've been eating. And there all was day. a circle, uh, and we we broke the ritual by placing the memento, and and the, but she had a goat skull, and so that was I, that was that part of it. It sounds like it is. You say it's a human body with a skull of a goat. That's correct. Does it mean something to you? That's a symbol of Mother Night. Which is the goddess that the hag worshipped? That would be my guess, that would be my thought, that would be my suspicion. Uh, is that relevant? Is that <clears throat> bad, well, good? I mean, it, When you've got a witch named Mother Night, and you've got a goddess named... Whatever. The, the Two goddess is... Wait, so the witch's name... Mother Midnight. Yes, that's what I said. And the goddess's name, Mother Night. Look, I don't have time for all of this. <laughs> I've got a masquerade that I have to get started so that all of the people in this land, their hopes rise. That sounds nice. And now that there's a Kellen of the Crooked Teeth flying around, they're going to need even more of a masquerade. I would what I need from you is I need you to kill whatever Midnights and Mothers and Hags and Witches there are in this land so I can have my masquerade. I should name it the Midnight Masquerade. Ah, it's a brilliant idea. I was going to say, there's no reason to tell anyone about this entity and create panic. It's a great idea. Sound. Logic. Sounds like the faster we deal with filthy Jasper, the sooner we get to Cyril and get on with hunting these witches. Yes. And speaking of that, <clears throat> he sniffs, I think I smell weasels. And he takes his cane and he points it towards a small mound of what looks to be 
tooth and gum and blood. And you begin to hear a strange squeaking, almost humanly, like a hybrid between a weasel and a human's howling noise. As out of this out of this pile, you begin to see the bloody form of filthy Jasper rise up as Philip raises his cane up into the air. Is this the creature you were talking about? I immediately draw my sword. Yes, hold it still so we can cleave it in twain. Philip's eyes go completely black as you see a dark black and purple beam of energy shoot from the tip of his cane. As all of a sudden, this creature, this filthy Jasper, begins to writhe and scream in terror. His human mouth open as he screams and he watches his neck cracks and flop to the side. All of his bones begin to break and twitch. His flesh begins to start rotting away in some places as fur falls from him. And then he slowly drops him into a slump, into a a loud thump on the ground, filthy Jasper dead before you. And as Philip's eyes slowly return back to their strange, like bluish gray color, he wipes some fake dust off of his jacket. Well, that wasn't so bad. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, well done. That's one way to do it. And I resheath my sword. And now our vermin problem is simply witches with a W. You could do that the whole time. Why well, didn't you come with us? Simply just, I had business in Cyril. I had to meet with the Archbishop. You know how hard we try to kill that thing? No, not at all. You didn't tell me. I have a, ho- a hole in my... Where? <laughs> your room okay. is going to be okay. Okay. Your, your room, please. Mantras. Yeah. Mantras. It's, that's exactly right. Yes. Just try to be positive. Remember. It's all right. Your teeth are back. Okay. You will You're gonna repeat okay. after me. Repeat after me. I am enough. I'm okay. <laughs> Doesn't work for me, but maybe it'll help you. <laughs> Just... Hello, Tom. Can I ask you a question? And I know you're gonna want to say no, but I think you should entertain the idea, okay, honey? What is it, Adela? What is it that you want? You know I'll entertain it. You just tell me, honey, and you can have what you want. Oh, you promise? I hope so. Can we take it home? I want it. Wait, honey. You want that human-faced weasel creature? Yeah, I do. I really want it. We could stuff it and put it on a mantelpiece. That would be kind of cool. It's got such a cute face. Look at the way it's all like human like, and it's even got freaking thumbs. <laughs> and he turns and he looks at her, and you can see a look of almost like repulsion and for, <clears throat> for a mere second frustration before his face becomes serene. Well, if you want it, honey, you can have it. Uh, you're going to have to go get it, though, because I'm not carrying it with me. Oh, I can't wait. He's going to make a great piece on, he's going to make a great staple on the mantelpiece. And you watch as she floats over on her desk and she slowly picks it up and she sets it next to her on the desk. He'll clean up real nice. What further business do we have here in this house before we can head to Cyril? Well, for me, I gotta clean up. I gotta get new wallpaper. I gotta get you new uh, drapes. We gotta, oh, we gotta get some beds in here with real down mattresses. Oh, that would be a cozy sleep, don't you think? You like four poster? I think we can only really do four poster. Do you want anything special carved in each one of your beds? Do you have any, uh, do you have any specifications you need for your bedroom? I gotta, I gotta fix up that spirit board. We can't have a broken spirit board in this house. We gotta do a couple of seances, see if anything lingers. We gotta get the blood out of the floor. Oh my gosh, we're gonna have to fix that stairs case that the weasels broke if there are holes in the walls we might have to do a lot of carpentry i'm gonna have to get someone in here to see if there were termites we should get a new carpet do you like what kind of paint painting do you like sleep is new to me so i don't know how how bedrooms work i'm going to you're so cute i'm gonna go out on a limb and assume that you don't need us for those things if you want to stay and help you can but and you hear from Philip a, a grunt of frustration. But I don't think that's a good idea, right, Philip? I'm right in that, right? That it's not a good idea for them to stay and hang out with me for the next week while I clean up the house? You're right, honey. It's not a good idea for them to stay here. They've got business in Cyril, and the Archbishop's waiting for them. I told him that they'd be coming, and he's ready. Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but... We'd like to get a move on. It seems to always be night. There's no morning. There's no need. For need. I, I, I feel as though I've... Got a good amount of rest. I, I'm ready to move on. I am rested too. And if you are going to be taking things in, then that why don't we have this conversation upstairs? We're not standing uh, angle deep in gum blood. Sure. Uh, what? It, only that. And I would gesture to the amber monolith. I would ask that you remove it. Do whatever you else you want with the house, but please remove this monolith so we do not need to sleep above it. Anything you want. We'll fill it in. We'll take it out. We'll get rid of it. We'll dispose of it. We'll throw it out. We'll dispose of it. 
Thank you. Well, that doesn't really answer why Filthy Jasper was just chilling in the teeth besides being gross. Wasn't he known for being in the walls? That was more of his hallmark. I have a feeling the creature was watching us, keeping an eye on us, maybe mm. relaying information. Marius roll a perception check. Actually, no. Both of you roll a perception check. Oh, gosh. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, dice. I know, dice tonight. I think I got a 19. Let me see. Yeah, we're playing Dungeons Yep, Dragons. 19. <laughs> better, that's better than mine. Uh, perception. Perception. <laughs> I'm sorry. Where the fuck is perception? Uh, that's an 18. Yeah. 18. So his body is completely fur-like, okay. um, but he had human hands on both his front and back legs. And a human face. Like okay. With awesome. like vermin like ears. Okay. Yeah, I'm just picturing him now as a stool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that visual. <laughs> I appreciate it. Who knows? Maybe you'll see him again. Um, 18. What did you get? 18 and 19. Okay. Um, but then it's, he'll be it's clean, easy Jeff. as you uh, as you motion towards this um, this pile that Philip had magically pulled Filthy Jasper out of. Both of you see that in the light of the pumpkins, there is some kind of glint, some sparkle, some bit of glittering magic. Figure that. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's downstairs. Oh, okay. Some kind of glittering magic or something within this mound of gum and teeth. It it appears to be magic. Or from from where you're at right now, object. you just see that it's glittering. Whether it's something magical or just metal glinting. I draw my Arching. sword from its sheath and I say, Jericho, come with me. And as I oh, sure. step sure, towards hilarious. this mound, I would use the tip of my sword to try to disrupt the mound and see if the glint is physical. And I would say I'll just keep your perception from before. Um, as you do this, you begin to see that this looks like some kind of filthy hovel that Jasper might have even been living in for a long time. Um, and in it is almost like a magpie's nest. You see spoons and other shiny trinkets. But what lies on the very top, the thing that caught the glint of the light, is something you've seen before. The horrible effigy of Petunia Lockwood when she was in her strange, her body was in the strange decaying position with the goat skull on her head. She was holding two things. She was holding a mirror-like dish and she was holding a dagger. And it looks like at some point in the night, Filthy Jasper had gone back and retrieved both of those objects mm. and was now sleeping with them in his little hovel. Well, well, well. What a poor, tragic bastard. Look at this. And filthy. What? Is that, what is that, what, was that horrible Petunia woman was holding up, up in the attic? It was. I, I would reach into my cloak and pull out a, like a small square of cloth and pick these items up from the muck. And as you do, you see that there are things inscribed on them. A dish is crudely etched with a goat skull inside of a hexagram in front of what looks like a full moon. And on the dagger, you see the markings of what appear to be weasels, pigeons, and centipedes. Um, I would clean them up with the cloth that I picked them up with, and as I clean each one, I hand it to Jericho. Oh, yeah, sure. As we're looking at them and examining them and handing them to Jericho. Get away from and the then I would just kind of sift through with my with my weapon the rest of the hovel to see if there's anything of, of note and then relay the rest of that information to the group. You can find, I would say, you know, five silver pieces, a couple of silver spoons that could probably fetch uh, a bit of money. Uh, there's a an alchemist set. Uh, there are spiders. Uh, there is a uh, a bauble Ooh. worth nothing. I care. Uh, there is a class one. Marius takes note of all of these things and doesn't give a single flying fuck. Uh, it leaves anything of value and is just interested of the. <laughs> is just interested with the items that he handed to Jericho. Well, this is really. I mean, the, 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 how does the craftsmanship look? Does it look like it's well done? Is it crude? Um, I would say that it it looks a bit of both. Um, it is it is not like pristinely carved. It looks like it looks like witch carvings or hag carvings. I should say. There's a difference. Um, uh, okay. Philip, Philip or, or I mean Lord Lord Driskenwald and, and Lady Driskenwald. You can call me Philip. Lord Driskenwald, uh, would you take a look at this and uh, and, and and see? <laughs> And see, does this mean something to you? You said this place was filled with weasels? Correct. 
I don't know much about hags, but what I do know is they come in threes. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Weasels, pigeons, centipedes. I think we've got two of the hags on our hands. And if I know anything, and I know some things, it's that witches align with hags. And I think Mother Midnight's behind all of us. Wait, wait. So what you're telling me is that two... There are two more hags before we even approach 13 witches, or two of these hags... Like I said, cut the head off the snake. You kill Mother Midnight, what's left of the 13? A body of a snake with no head. Clearly. These are the two hags in the house? The two hags and a witch. Well, are you saying there are two more hags in this house? I don't think they're in this house. Bentley, let's have a conversation outside. <laughs> You're wrong. I get the fuck out of this. Yeah, say no more. Yeah. For the sake of having... the old bone There's grinder. some pumpkins. <laughs> oh, well, while, while we walk, Philip, I, I was... I, I thought of your jingle. <laughs> Tell Take, me about taking it. care of, 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 of things, Philip, so it's... Uh, he, and he'll be taking care of weasels every dusk. <laughs> taking care of weasels, Philip Drusk. <laughs> He's been taking care of weasels. It's all his. Taking care of weasels and other witchy biz. <laughs> <laughs> you get outside with that song. Perfect. Uh, and so yeah, you make your way out uh, out to the porch of what had been the Crooked House. Down the steps, out into what still feels to be the early hours of dusk, but you're familiar with the morning now in Drusk and Vault. And Philip looks to all of you and he looks down towards a chain, a small chain that is hanging out of the pocket on the front of his vest. He pulls it out, he looks at this very elaborate golden pocket watch, and he shakes his head. I have business to attend to, something much more important than this. I have the caterer coming from the masquerade. Adela, come here, give me a smooch. I'll tell you the important information and you get our new friends on the road. You make sure they have everything they need. You got it, honey? Oh, I got it, Philip, I promise. And she rushes to him, wraps her arms around him as he lifts her up by her by her tiny waist. She kicks out one of her legs, the um the dark purples and blues of her um of her fringe, like moving with the swish of her hips as she leans in for a kiss. And it's uncomfortable to watch as they kiss for one minute. Two minutes. Oh, Jesus. Wow. Almost three minutes. Couldn't make it out. Avert your eyes, Jericho. Occasionally, you hear a giggle me. deep within Adela's throat, yeah. and I would say it's easy cool. to tell that their um, their embrace is also a way for them to uh, exchange information. What? And as Whoa. they finish with a wink, not some dish. Philip taps Adela on the rear with the end of his cape. I'll see you at home, honey, and he. Climbs into Thanks. climbs into the carriage. Sweet he Jesus. waves at all of you as the door shuts and the carriage begins to make its way down uh, down the road. Bye, that Lord strange person manning the horses, where just deep within, beneath his top hat, you see the two red eyes, but nothing more. He doesn't turn and look towards you. He just simply mans the carriage as Philip rides off into the mist of the moors. Oh, what do you think of my jingle? Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. He sure had a lot to say. Oh, oh boy. So, Gosh. you got a lot of work on your hands, but I promise by the time you come back, this place is going to look great. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, by the way, and she pulls out from behind her back. You didn't even see it a now completely um, repaired spirit board. <gasps> Look what a little bit of mending can do. It's all fixed. Your bad luck should go away, so you don't have to roll a disadvantage anymore for the rest of the campaign. See your Whatever that's this, supposed to mean. This is why we always have hope. Things can be repaired. Yes. Wise words from a damn peer. Well, not all broken things can be repaired. <laughs> that's not true, honey. All things can be repaired. I promise. Just listen to Adela. Adela is right. I wouldn't steer you in the wrong direction. I have much to make up to Petrini, but this feels like the first step. I'm glad to see it back in one piece. You know, everyone mis makes mistakes, honey. You don't have to worry, <clears throat> though. I got, I fixed it for you, and I'll make sure everything looks great. 
I promise. I know I got a little excited when you got here, but you've done a lot for us already. And if you can get rid of this witch problem, then, oh my gosh, the time I'm going to have that masquerade. I can't thank you enough, honeys. I really can't. Speaking of which, we should probably get moving. Oh, yeah. And if you know, I don't know if Philip told you, but... If you get rid of the witch problem, you got you got invitations to the masquerade, VIP, the vips of the whole thing. I promise. That's why he's gonna give you your presents. Can you imagine dancing all night under the full moon? It'll be beautiful. Well, hopefully it won't be full, but yes, the masquerade is tonight, is it not? Oh no, not at all. It's not for a bit. But we got a lot of preparing to do because you know we gotta get that strange frog guy to get people in from all over the place. And he's not easy to work with. And right now with that, and she points up towards the hag moon, outside you guys, there's no one coming or going. Who, who normally gets in, invited to these kinds of swanky soirees? Oh my gosh, it's the best. All of the leaders of the lands are going to be there. Every single member of the of the province. You know, you're going to meet one of them when you go to Cyril because I don't know if Philip told you, but... That's essentially like, what does he call it in most places? Like the capital? That's the capital of Fulsense. Well, we are looking forward to meeting all of these very important people, and we're looking forward to this <clears throat> masquerade. My favorite's the Iron Maiden. You're gonna love her. Oh, all right. Uh, duly noted. Um, but don't, please don't tell the Archbishop that. Oh, I shouldn't have said it. Look at me, Adela, putting my foot in my mouth. No, we won't, we won't repeat it. Oh, but you're gonna need to know. So you're gonna head down this path, okay? That's the direction you're gonna you're gonna travel. Just this straight path right in front of you. Okay. I'm gonna need you to stay to the path itself because, and I don't say this to be mean, but you don't look like the people we normally see here. I mean, we got a zombie. We got a, a almost the vampire. Not quite. Whatever you are, but and Johan, you need to eat a one. sandwich. <laughs> what? An orc, I'm the most normal one. How could you possibly not recognize that? Okay. Yorgren, can I tell you a secret? Yes. You got a tombstone on your back, honey. Oh, well, that's fair. It is horrifying. Okay. But we are invited to the masquerade. Oh, you betcha. If you can get rid of our witch problem, you've got the prettiest invitations that Adela can muster. And let's say we manage to not kill 13 witches before the masquerade. I don't know how many times Philip's going to tell you this. You don't got to kill all 13. You just got to cut the head off of the snake. And let's say we don't cut the head off the snake water. Are we still invited to the masquerade? There won't be a masquerade if we don't get rid of these witches. Oh. At least I don't think. I guess I'm going to have to ask Philip, but I think that's the plan. We understand. So how long of a journey do we have ahead? Well, it's probably going to take you about a full day's travel, I think. So you should get there, you know, I don't know, around the witching hour. And is there oh, anything? speaking of, you're going to need to figure out a way to tell the time here. And she reaches into her pocket and she goes, this is what he wanted you to have. And she passes you a pocket watch. Hmm. And on it, there are the symbols of moons. Ooh. And words that indicate what the rough times of day would be in this land. This is perfect. Morning is known as early dusk. Okay. Noon slash afternoon is mid dusk. Late afternoon, late dusk. Evening is evening. That's going to be the most complicated mm. one to remember. Yep, 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 yep. Ah. The nighttime hours are known as the midnight hours. And mm. midnight and into the early morning is known as the witching hours. Oh, boy. Mm. And so when I refer to things in that way, you'll have this handy key to be able to so, tell you how that works. As we were heading into the house, you had described it, it as early dusk. early dusk, which is basically morning. Yes, so it is slowly making its way toward mid-dusk, but it would still be considered early dusk. And for all intent, in tents <clears throat> and porpoises, it is um, the way that the, the day looks is very similar to that. So in the morning, it looks like yeah. dusk has just come upon you and then all the way through darkness. Mm. Well, if there is nothing else that you need from us now. Oh, yeah, no, you've got this bag of 300 gold coins. You know, if you can get rid of a hag, we gotta pay you for it, right? It's one of three. There'll be more where that comes from. I take from. the bag and I hand it to Briggsy. You'll probably <laughs> need it. I know <laughs> you, you don't look I'll take like care the, of this. Don't worry. You don't look like the type that oh, really worries Briggsy. about money too much. Oh, that sounded really rude. I didn't mean it in the way no, that it no, sounded. No, no, no. You are correct. But it is going to be really important for you to have fun because in Cyril, they're going to use them. 
All that right. being said, we've already let the Archbishop know that you're coming, so he'll be expecting you, but you gotta keep to the road or the very, very rough tree line of the forest. Are you hearing me, honeys? Because the people that walk around here, they're not gonna know that you have our blessing. And they're not gonna know the Archbishop's expecting you. And even if you tell them, they're probably not gonna believe you, you understand? Understood. All right, well, so you'll be careful. And so there's bad stuff going on in, in Folsom's? Is what oh, Lord yeah. Philip said? Mother Midnight's definitely in full force. Oh, Philip wants me to tell you what to expect, but it's horrible. It's really, you don't need to chew on those coins, honey. They ain't food. If you're hungry, I can get you something. I can whip something up in that kitchen. Oh, actually, I don't know how to cook. No, I'm just making sure it's genuine cup. Oh, it is, I promise. Oh, no, I know, I'm just checking. All right, well, you do you. So anyway, are we gonna go? Well, no, I gotta tell you what you're gonna expect, but it's horrifying, it's awful, it's terrible. You wanna hear about it? Yes, we would. Well, let me, I know, I'm not so sure. The fear is the prizes we have, the better. I agree. Well, what the Archbishop has told us in our meeting yesterday, the crops are coming down with an ergot, the people are having a hard time finding food. It's horrible. But on top of that, it's not just the crops they can't eat. The animals, there's something happening to them. When they birth things, they're coming out as abominations. I'm telling you, it's awful. I don't want to tell you what it's like. I don't want to say the words. But think of the worst thing you can think of, and that's what's happening. Similar to uh, our friend, the uh, filthy Jeff. Oh, I don't know. He seemed kind of cute, don't you think? So He'd make no, a great no. stole. Wait, wait, wait. Than that. Is this just... Oh, yeah. This is just their livestock this is affecting the peoples as well. As far as I know, it's just the livestock, but there are things affecting the people. Children are going down with a strange sickness, and they don't know how to cure it. But on top of that, some of the adults and stuff, they're going mad, like completely, absolutely bonking. Bonkers? Bonking? I don't know. And they believe they've been here in some kind of women in the woods, witches or something. And so the Archbishop's pretty sure it's gotta be Mother Night. This is real bad. This is much worse than it's ever been. It's gotta be her. It's gotta be Mother Midnight. Zoe, are you, Zoe, are you caution us on the path you believe the witches to be in the woods? Well, I do, and I think Philip does too, and I think Archbishop, Archbishop Renault does too. Or at the very least, the agents. Do you and Philip have a sense of what Mother Midnight's uh, ultimate goal may be? What, why, why she would be doing these things if she is causing plagues and mutations? I think she wants this land for herself. I think, and I hate to say it, but I think she doesn't like parties or fun. I know Gosh. it's horrible, right? <laughs> Who doesn't like a good, I think she a might good hullabaloo? The, I think she might be the worst of all worst things. Dare I say it? Should I say it? Briggsy, should I say it? I mean, you said that she's the worst of all things, unless there's something else I think she might be an introvert! <coughs> Can you imagine a fate worse than death, I tell you? Oh my god. Gosh, what's that? <laughs> They're like a necromancer. <laughs> no. Oh. It's someone who doesn't like parties. It's someone who doesn't like to talk to people. It's someone who, oh my gosh, dare I say it, prefers solitude. <gasps> I prefer I solitude. <laughs> oh, you're, you're just joking. I, I prefer the cold ground and a quiet night. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're a right comedian. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> <laughs> I love a dry sense of humor. Well, I, I, I'm sort of programmed to to like being around people, so I really don't have a choice. So I don't really understand. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> All right. I think it comes with a territory that witches probably don't like parties or fun. It's kind of the whole thing is to is to stop all that, right? No, and we're going to deal with it. I mean, we're going to kill witches. And then we're gonna party. We're gonna we're gonna schmooze and we're gonna drink and we're gonna. And you have never had a party like an Adela party. I'm telling you, it's gonna be the greatest night of your life. <clears throat> I am excited for this masquerade. Am I already 
wearing what they should be? Oh no, you would you would not fit in at one of my masquerades, but it's fine because really? I will send you something to wear. I'll have things custom made. Oh, it'll be beautiful. Very but generous. we need we need to get to the to the real problem at hand, and that's stopping these witches so I can even have my party in the first place. And consider it done. We're Thank going to get notice. honored immediately. And if if Lord Philip needs us for any reason, I assume he has ways to contact us. He'll find a way. He's resourceful, that hunk of man. All right. I have one more request before we make our way. Sure, I'll do my best to fulfill your request. If I'm going to be putting on a new outfit, I'm going to need some way to part myself from this new purse that has attached itself to my person. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. That's not going to be possible. You know of this? Oh, yeah, I wouldn't have put that thing on or touched it for the life of me. But, you know, to be quite honest, it's it's got its uses. You might as well go ahead and use it. I mean, you can't get rid of it. Do you know what it is? I vaguely have an idea of what it does. It'll steal things for you. This is my fault. I, I gave Lethica the bag and I feel responsible. And there's some sort of horrific creature that lives oh, inside. Oh, yeah, there is. You mean that it'll steal things for us when the... When it well, reaches out. it'll steal things for itself, I guess I should say. So you should probably check it on occasion to make sure there's nothing untoward inside of it. But anything you put in it will stay in there. It's not going to throw things out. So you might as well get some use out of it because you're stuck with it for a while. <clears throat> that guy, I'm so sorry. I will find a way to fix this, I promise. Yeah, I'll look in our library. It's big, it's huge, it's gargantuan, and I'll see if I can find a book that'll tell us how to do it. I'd like that very much. If Thank there's you. a magic that can separate you, honey, Adele is going to be able to master it, I promise. But now, you're all covered in blood and gore and muck, so let me go ahead and snap my fingers and get you ready for your trip, Ooh. because... As it stands right now, no one's going to talk to you. And she's going to snap her fingers uh, the Ooh. five remaining Ooh. times. And you will all be cleaned of the disgustingness Ooh. of the house. Were you looking at that, Virgil? Real respectable gentleman. As a best you could probably do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, I can't repair your, you know, zombiness, I guess. Oh, that's, Is that offensive, that... your room, to call him a zombie? Oh, I'm sorry, I should ask you. I mean, that's kind of what I am. I'm sort of. I've heard it referred to as zombie. I mean, thrall. I mean, technically, a zombie doesn't really have a mind of its own, so I'm not technically a zombie, but it's easy enough. All right, I'll just call you Briggsy because it makes it easiest for me, you know. Oh, one, one more question, very important. Uh, for your masquerade, do you have a uh, musical accompaniment? Oh, we do. We're going to get the oh. greatest band we can possibly get. But if you'd like to perform a song, we would love to do a spotlight. If, if you wouldn't mind, I mean, if we if we take care of the cut off the, the proverbial head of the snake, and I'd like to pull out my, my sickle and I just mime cutting off the head of the oh, snake. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't, I, I would mighty appreciate perhaps uh, just, just one, one tune. I would love it. Ooh, well, thank you. Do you think you could perform Philip's song when we walk into the masquerade as we're going down the stairs? Do you think you could perform it for us and everyone in attendance? Oh, is there? Is, is he, does he have a theme song that he prefers, or should I write one? I thought you just wrote one. You sang it to us as we were oh, walking that was the a house. jingle. It really wasn't a full-fledged song. That's all there is. You can write something. I could. Right I could now. expand. I could. I also oh, just thought Jericho, of another one. Oh, honey, and she runs over to you and she gives you a big smooch on oh, your cheek. I'm working wow. on this one. What do you? Ooh. Ooh, my, well, thank you. This is the greatest day of my whole life. You are life. just an absolute treasure. Well, thank you. Do, do you think you would like this? I'm, well, I'm working, what I have you is like, my lord likes to party all the time, party oh all the time, party all the time. Oh, he'd love it. And if he doesn't, well, I sure do. Oh, well, that's just that repeated. So maybe I'll try something a little <laughs> less repetitive. Could you create a dance to it that we could teach everyone and we can do in unison? Because Thrill is getting really boring. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll c c dancing is really not my specialty, but I, I could give it a shot. Anyways, oh, I don't well, want... You better be on your way, because the moon is slowly starting to rise higher into the sky, and next thing you know, it's going to be pitch dark, and you're going to be out there all alone. All right. All right. Is I'll everyone... stay here, and I'll get your house ready for you. So once you're done in zero with whatever Archbishop Renault needs your help with, you cut off the proverbial head of the snake, you head right on back here, all right? Understood. Is, is everyone ready? 
Yes. Sir. I'm ready to go. Yes. Yes. As much as I can be. I feel as big as Bane. I look at the watch, and I'm looking up at the sky, and I say, before we leave, I'd, I'd like to just say a prayer. It's, Seems to be morning, and I need, I need to do my rituals. If anyone would like to join me. Yeah, sure. Do we need to do anything special for your prayer? No, just just reflect on hope and eating people. Is it going to be uncomfortable for you if you walk in further into a town that's not about your god? Not at all. I don't think the people of Foltis, especially Art Bishop, Art Bishop. Oh no, I can't believe I said that. That was a dirty word. <laughs> Art, Archbishop, oh my gosh, it's a tongue twister. I don't think he'd like you uttering another god's name in his town, so you might have to keep that on the quiet. I appreciate the heads up, and of course it will not offend me. I am here to help. Uh, okay, great. So what else. do I need to do? I'll pray. Uh, not nothing. I just I, I'll lead yeah. us if you don't mind. And and right. please don't feel don't feel the need, but I'm going to go and stretch. Yeah. And I'll understood apart from the party. <sighs> It is dawn, O seeker of the light. What is thy duty? I shall say a prayer to the light. We welcome you, morning lord, and we honor you this day, celebrating your light as we partake in our journey once more. Great and powerful, the sun is your blessing and shows us your loving way. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you for your warmth that touches us to the core, shining down on the land and the sea, making things grow and bloom. Your eternal love will always be in our hearts, O Lord of the Sun. We honor you, Dawn Lord, for you are the beacon who casts away the gloom. And we devote our days in your holy name, and the darkness we shun. What shall you do second? I shall hold high the holy book that the sun might bless it. How shall the ritual end? I shall reflect on the glory of the light as it conquers the dark. No, I'm, I'm in. Aww. Marius, that was so oh, sweet. Look at you being all holy and stuff. <laughs> I just love it. The Fanda has never abandoned me, even in my darkest moments. Well, may he be with you here. Thank you. Just don't mention his name once you get to see the world. Understood. And make sure the stretching one knows that about Shaw. We'll pass that along. I, I'm, I'm getting the sense that, that Mr. Lethica doesn't find uh, uh, your, 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 your your best fella there, Mr. Lefander, uh, uh, favorable to her. Yes, I noticed uh, when I mentioned Saloon that uh, <clears throat> Lethica had less than hmm. acceptable uh, feelings about that, but it's all right. That's uh, how he's acting like, so. These men of the cloth, you know, they all worship one god or another, and they all hate each other, and they all fight, and they all say the same shit, no offense. <laughs> Briggsy, there's no hate. Now, that's actually kind of true, so don't mention Lathanda, and don't mention Shaw when you get to Cyril, because uh, I just, you know, wouldn't recommend it. Again, understood, but Briggsy, there's there's no hate. Oh, look, I, 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 I truly mean no no offense, and, and that's fine. I'll respect, I'll take my hair off. None taken. When, when you did your prayer, it just felt a little bit ironic when you're talking about the sun and give us our light, and I mean... It's like dusk, and is it, can we even see it's a sun? Dark. No. On the horizon, you can, you can, you cannot see the sun, but you can see the glow of what would be a sun okay. if it could crest okay. over the horizon. But it's this like sun perpetually like can a... never crest over the horizon. I, I, I think Damn. to your point, that's exactly why we should pray to the sun. It's trying very hard. Lathander wants to be here, but something is preventing it from doing so. I'm quite probably confident. that tsetse fly you just smashed in your DMP hand. <laughs> One That's why you hope. smashed it, right? Correct. I'm no. quite confident that I've not said the word "shar" since we've all met each other. Oh, yeah, but... I know. You don't have to. You gotta sit those all over your body. But I will not mention my dark lady. Uh, can you tell us what god would be preferred in Zero? It's gonna be really hard to guess in a place called Full Sense, but it's Foltis. Okay. So, uh, I pull out the map. Pretty well, presumably. Hey, Yogi, can you pass me the map? Oh, oh thank God. you. <laughs> yeah, right. Can you go by Yogi? I love that name. Uh, All right, so <laughs> so Fulsense is the name of the province. Oh, well, yeah. And the Cyril's, Cyril's the capital, which is where we're going. That's the, yeah, that's the city or town or whatever. And you're going to pass a lot of provincial towns, some poor provincial towns on your way there. Just make sure that you don't interact with them, all right? And so they worship the god Fultis. Oh, yeah. They're well, on the one true path. Just ask a, anyone. Doesn't mean anything to me. 
And by the way, what do you mean you haven't said anything about Sharp for the last like eight hours? You can say nothing <laughs> but cryptic shit about Sharp. <laughs> That's good news from Orbit. That's not canon. We don't know. We don't know anything about Sharp. We don't know who the fuck's a, what the fuck is a Sharp? <laughs> Um, I make brings the ignite into flame. <laughs> yeah, so that's basically everything you need to know. You got your money, you got your pocket watch, so you know what time it is, because I know it can be a little bit to get adjusted to. I mean, I imagine it's all I've ever known. And, um, yeah, so I'm going to miss you, shucks. You sure you don't want to just stay? I know Philip would be right mad at me if I convinced you, but you could we I have... don't think you want us to stay, oh for we God. would delay the party. You're right, I really want to have a master right? We would distract you oh, quite a bit. I love being distracted. Oh, but I do have a question before we go. I would love um, to answer this you, Do you or Phil have any of those uh, car- an extra Did carriages? Did you just call him Phil? Oh, I'm going to tell him that he's going to love it. Oh, good. Uh, I don't even I didn't realize what I was saying. Anyway, Phil, uh, if he would prefer to. I call him Philly sometimes. All right, Because, well, you know, he's like a right stallion. Oh. Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> blah. I don't know too much about biology. <laughs> Gosh. We, we have our mission. We know what we must do, and we're going to do it so that you can have your party. I love it so much. I hope you guys are safe, because I'm going to be honest with you. Can I be honest with you? I'm going to go ahead and do it. I've grown really attached to you, and we've only just met. Thank you. If, if, if I may, I, I do have a question. Um, Lord Philip isn't here right now, and maybe you don't have the answer, but does he really have the artifacts that he says he has? Oh, you know it, honey, and many more. Roll an insight check. Can I as well? Yep. I'm telling you, he's got tons of trophies and things. Damn it! I got a 12, it should have been a 24. It rolled a 19, but I thought it was gonna roll off, so I hit it, and then it's, it's still pretty good. You're, you did better than me. It's still pretty You're good. You're punching oh. your dice to <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I You tried to game the... Uh, <laughs> uh, that is a 17. You are both easily able to tell that she is not lying to you. I've seen them with my own eyes. They're really pretty. Not my kind of thing. I'm not really an artifact kind of girl. I prefer jewels. I, I don't mean to be out of line. I don't mean to uh, move beyond my station. I just, I am cons- I've been tricked before. And, and I this- I don't blame you. Look at you, honey. You're a bloodsucker now. The, the grail is, is-, is No, it's, it's all right. I, I am this way because of my own volition. <laughs> And my own mistakes that I accept. Oh, honey, lust will get the the best of all of us. Farron knows that better than anyone. I just, I, I don't want to be let down again. I need the Grail. Well, if you if you cut the head off the snake, I promise you, he'll give you what you're asking for. We 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 will do it. We are so, so grateful. I can't even begin to tell you. We can get portraits made and have you put up in the hallway. Honestly, you remind me someone of you remind me of someone I knew a long, long time ago. Well, I, I get that a lot. I have one of those faces. You really do. He was such a great guy. I miss him a lot. Oh well, you better be on your way. Are we ready? All right. And so, no, no, no carriages. No, just we're gonna walk. We're gonna walk. Oh yeah, you got Good sturdy feel. legs. Look at you. You gotta wander like a true wandering minstrel. I mean, sure they're <sighs> rotten a little bit, but it's not like they're gonna go anywhere. Just used to having a vessel, you know, to carry me around. Well, you have your own vessel, your own living corporeal form there. Lathanda gave you two perfectly good working legs. We're going to use them. All right. <sighs> Lead the way. Well, goodbye, friends. Goodbye. It was so great to meet you. It's been enchanting meeting you. Lady oh, let's hug. Goodbye. And she runs between Ooh. all of you and embraces you. Oh, you're just, you're just the it's best. Kind of and she cool. is, even with her heels, she's barely five feet tall. Oh, she's um, so nice. And she... <laughs> <laughs> How pear-shaped is she? <laughs> she I didn't ask that. <laughs> I read she, your mind, Mike. <laughs> she is pear-shaped in the sense that she is... Um, thick she's, like a bowl of oatmeal? She's, she's not thick. She's uh-huh. very thin, but she is... Um, 
She's exactly what you would think of as a as like a 1920s flapper. Like a flapper. Right? I'm yeah. just teasing, mm -hmm. but thank you for the description. It um, helps me role play better. <laughs> though she has a little more of a booty than you'd expect, and as she oh, as she saunters between mm -hmm. each of you, her um, the fringe on her dress that shifts almost like starlight. It's this beautiful Ooh. dark blue and purple dress with the silver with the silver fringe that glimmers like the night sky as she dances between each of you. Her uh, hair very short, tightly curled to her head um, with the um, the glimmering headband that has the crescent of very, actually have it, a symbol. That's not it. Uh, a symbol on it, one that you've seen on the um, one that you've seen on the carriage. Holy shit! Um, what appears to be the symbol of the Crescent Court, embroidered in uh, bead and beautiful silver beading, um, on the wow. on the headband and a large black feather that comes out and curls around her head um, as she saunters to each of you and gets on tiptoe to hug you, or in some of your cases, literally climbs up on you and grabs you in a hug. Her little feet dangling, her small blue heels. I give her a full yes. hug. To very genuinely oh, you brief. smell lovely. Thank I would you. grudgingly accept it, but not really hug back. <laughs> You're one at me, I promise. Thank you so much for everything. We will see you again soon. Oh, I cannot wait. You can't be more than a day, I imagine, and see you. You're so quick at what you do. Look what you did here. Right. Well, have safe travels. Thank you. Stay safe yourself. Oh, I will. I'm just going to be in the house here, and I promise you, Philip wouldn't let anything bad happen to me. Are we ready? He's a, he's a lucky fella. All right, I don't know it. Well, hey. Come on now. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't reference your, 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 your state, your current state of being. I, I, That's I, what she called you when you didn't get all offended. She is a fair maiden. We treat each other... With respect. We all treat each other oh, with respect. I don't we think got, I've ever been called a fair maiden before, but I like it. We got blood suckers, we got zombies, what? we got orcs. Briggsy. Uh, come on, this witch isn't gonna kill herself. <laughs> <laughs> Briggsy, what did I tell you about having hope? This will be fixed. We will we will come out to the other side of this better people. Alright? Uh, look, I certainly hope so, but optimism's a little hard right now based on what we fucking with this. Alright, goodbye! I'll see you later! Oh, Bye! Right it was lovely to. meeting yeah. you. And Let's, you can continue to have this we, conversation we argue, while you We travel. argue for like an hour uh, as we do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll, I'll say, um, I'm real sorry. I'm real sorry about um, what, what Virgil was saying while you were saying your prayers. <laughs> What? Uh, I I did not hear anything. Oh, go, uh, gosh, I'm glad. I'm glad for that. And you make your way towards Cyril. There will be moments for you to finish that. You make your way towards Cyril. And as you walk from what was the Crooked House, it is now to eventually be your home in the land of Druskenvald. You see as Adela holds on to one of the posts on the porch, she leans over and waves at you voraciously as you all begin to walk down the path. And as you look back slowly, the mist begins to roll in. Just the normal standard mist of the moors and of this place. As the like house- Like a foggy mist. Yes, like a foggy like mist. Not like the horrible mist. Like the horrible <laughs> mist. Okay. As, um, as it rolls in and obscures nice your view mist. of the house. And all you're left with is the, the winding dirt and rocky road that leads deeper and deeper, cutting through the forest that you know from looking at your map and the directions that Adele gave you that this will lead you to Cyril. And you travel. It is now about mid-dusk, a little after mid-dusk. I'm going to be honest, Jerrica, I'm, I'm not going to ask you what he said. I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I've had people say horrific things to me about uh, my faith, others, other people's faith. You know, Briggsy even himself has, has said some pretty egregious things, but- But I said no offense before I said it. Well, and that's true. And again, none, that, no makes it, that makes it okay. None taken, and and I want to be I want to be clear that that just because I feel the need that I have to pray does not mean that anyone needs to partake. You don't have to partake. You don't even have to remove your hat. No, I'm it is no, like, simply uh, an option. Oh, this is simply polite to move your hat. Yeah, every I, time there's a prayer, I'll take my fucking hat off. That's that's, that's what I'll do. That's well, my my way to pay my respects. Briggsy, I appreciate you, and I believe that the more time we spend together, the tenets will stick to you. All right, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. Them. Virgil, Virgil, don't much care for the the gods or the goddesses. If, if you. 
accept my apology in advance. There's no need to apologize. I, you know, you, you could use a little bit of faith yourself, Virgil. He, you do not want to hear this. Can I see the pocket watch? Yes, of course. I'm not talking about it. That's why I forgot. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. You don't have to roll. You don't have to roll play this. <laughs> uh, well, I'll look around, and I want to. So Jericho or I would like to basically be getting inspiration for for music or for stories. And I look around. Is this kind of like it, it's, there was like farmlands and like what so is? So right now, what you're walking through is simply just trees on either oh, okay, side okay. of you and a road that winds through it. I'll say at this point, you've probably been walking for about an hour or so. You've noticed that there have been trails and signposts that lead towards what you would imagine are provincial towns. Uh, you've even seen flickering of lights off in the trees and the occasional movement as if there are people about further out. None of them paying you any mind so far. But I wouldn't say that you've seen any of these towns yet. But you got imagine it, they're it. out there dotting the forest and the lands. Got it. Well, I mean, there's not that horrible spooky biz that we first encountered in the in the trees when we first got here. But I guess we should keep an eye to the woods. Sorry, right. this has been a much easier journey than I was expecting. So we'll, we will be careful. We will keep our wits about us. You will continue to help light our way and, and we will be all right. We got, we got some pumpkins, some dancing pumpkins. I, I, I do hope you know, uh, Briggsy, do not, I do not hate anyone else for anyone, anyone else's religion. I, I accept everyone. It's a, Again, it's one of the tenets is that it's, at the end of the day, we're here to help. Well, uh, and that's fine. And, and I hope that you exhibit that when we meet people that really don't like your God. And they really like theirs. Um, so I'll just think, let's keep an open mind with these people that we meet. Briggs, you have my word. We're not the most... Uh, Regular bunch. So let's get in. We'll meet this archbishop, kill a witch, and then we can go to the masquerade. Well, and to your point, I would think that people are going to hate us much more for these. Well, this, and I peel some of the Ew. flesh off, uh, <laughs> than whatever gods we may worship. I think you're right. And that's why we gotta be amenable. We gotta be friendly. Nice. Let's use some charisma, right? Eh? Oh, I went to Jericho. Oh yeah, no, I, I'm programmed to, to be very charismatic. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> and, to enjoy, and to enjoy folk of any variety. I don't, I don't have a, a, an ounce of ill will, except when when Virgil takes over. Then there's nothing but that. But oh, oh old Jericho sticks. I, I got nothing but a smile and a tune for everyone I meet. And if we offer to always aid and avoid negativity, number twos and sevens, then it will be fine. Maybe you, these are some of the mantras you can use, Yorgrim. That's exactly How right. are you feeling? How's your teeth coming in there, fellow? Big buddy? I've been checking as we go to just make sure. Maybe they saying, like, I'm not a beaver. They appear to have stopped beaver, growing, and they are the length that you would expect. As far as you know. Yes, so far. <laughs> they stopped coming out, but they are yeah. continuing to grow yeah. into your oh, brain. Oh, they're <laughs> uh, well, My mantras are set. I need, no I need to add nothing to them. I simply want to get into this town, figure out how to kill this witch, and then get to the business of killing this witch. Ooh, well, that's that's very, uh, very businesslike of you, of killing witches at the very least. This has not been my first time. This will not be my first time uh, going into a new place where a god is worshipped other than my own. I would ask yourself what you are willing to agree to, be it the customs or the rituals of this place, I will be putting any hang-ups that I may have aside, and I will certainly not be evangelizing like yourselves. It's very new deity. I recommend that we <laughs> go with the flow. Well, I mean, nothing. I, I hope that I've, uh, I've represented myself appropriately in that, uh, I, 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 I am prepared to do the same thing. I, I, respect everyone and anyone. I, I certainly don't feel the need to evangelize. I have my rituals and I will do them in private. I suspect that you will be keeping your word on that when we enter the city. And and you, you can speak to us as you will. I certainly don't mean anything by that. I just want to impress upon all of you that when we get there, they may ask us to 
do things for Foltus or in the name of Foltus, and I intend to say yes. Far, far from me. I can say anything. No, ab- ab- absolutely. <laughs> then we are in agreement. Thank you. I'll do for the fucking tooth fairy. Okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, too soon. Oh, Sounds no. Soon. <laughs> well, uh, Unbelievable that you would say something. Just, like just that. so I'm clear, and just so. Oh, Virgil, that is a very rude thing to say about a lovely goddess. God, she's a goddess, Virgil. Well, but so just so I'm clear, uh, so so we got we got uh, so I'm not offending anyone. You're, we know that Briggsy and myself we don't really uh, are, 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 are men or, or gators of, of, of the cloth. Uh, we don't really worship. But uh, your room and, and, and Farron, how about yourself? Any are you are you you uh, prayerly types? wouldn't call it priority. I'm from, I was from, the circle of the Heart's Blight, and we serve Gorthos. Gorthos? Oh. That's new. I've never heard of that. What is, is that, is that a god? You needn't worry about it. He's what makes the world spin in my dream. Okay, well, I'll, I'll do my best not to offend him. I, mean, I don't exactly know where you fit into the cycle of life, but for the rest of us, we'll return to the earth when he calls us and not, grow anew. Not to pry, Farron, but if you, you, know, you believe that this entity is the reason the earth spins, that seems very godly to me. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Sounds like a god to me. <laughs> oh. Sorry. What do you think? The, what, what could be more natural in the cycle of life and death? Well... I mean, just as just as sure as life and death are, the sun and the moon rise, always, even here in this place, it tries. Because at this time, you've passed a few of the provincial towns. You're able to see them just on the edges of the fields here as the tree line gets further and further away from the road before once again engulfing the road. <clears throat> and as you pass through a large outcropping of trees, you see coming up upon you, you as you come up upon what looks to be a dilapidated farmhouse. It's a little bit of farmland off the side, right on the outskirts of the woods. And you hear a sound, strange. I'm not going to make the sound for the <laughs> house's sake. A wounded animal oh, God. Uh... as it screams and whines as if in agonizing pain. Jericho, you notice first that what you see here is a small dilapidated house which looks like it could be in use, just in disrepair. The field outside with a broken scarecrow, one arm completely broken off as it watches vigilantly over what look to be rotting ergot ridden crops and towards the back a tool shed and a small stable. And the sound that you hear of this wounded animal seems to be coming from inside the stables. Is this off the path? So the path is, so the best way to think about it is the path is winding through um, as if it's been cut through the trees, but there are areas that have been more attended that, um, that push the tree line further and further back where you see bits of small provincial towns dotting the area where the tree line is maybe a mile out. Mm. What you've encountered as you've passed through that is the trees coming back in, kind of overshadowing you, and then as you walk through them, there's another area where it looks like it's the trees have been removed and there's a small farm there. And so there's, um, there's cro- the, fields of crops. There are fields of crops, and then in the very center of it is this um, very small, run-down farmhouse, a fields of crops with a scarecrow, and then behind that what appears to be a tool shed. And then on the other side, it's just open field and the road stretching out <clears throat> further ahead. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. I'm, I'm sorry to suggest it, but if <clears throat> someone is in danger or someone is wounded, we must help. We have to investigate. Well, uh, yeah, we. it seems to be like it's not entirely abandoned. Scarecrow, seen better days. Me too. Uh, let's let's go see the, what, if we can help that poor animal. At well, the very least, you put it out of its misery. Hang on. None of you have ever been traversed a dark domain before. 
That would be correct. Well, now I have. If we were standing well, in one, I presume. Semantics. Oh. <laughs> what are you trying to say, Jorgen? There are many things in the woods that will try and trick you. Said to stay on the path. We're here to kill witches, not to investigate sheds. You you think that this 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 horrific bay animal baying is is some sort of trick? So what Adela told you was to stay on the path or the very fringes of the tree line, to not go deep into the woods. So, so, so we would think that this is like this is on the path. That's I. So I, based on what she said, was to stick to the path or the very fringes of the tree line. So don't wander into the woods. So don't wander into the woods is essentially what she was saying. So I would say that if you felt compelled or you wanted to investigate something, you would feel that this would not be breaking her trust. Your warning can all is also totally valid. Right, it is. I'm just. I just want to make sure that yeah, you, we don't that have Mace to. Knows your Grim can pretend, can proceed as he chooses to. We don't have to walk past it, but we should approach with great caution. Uh, understood. I agree that it comes with the risks, but Adela also told us about strange things happening to the beasts of this, the beasts of burden of this land. I would like to learn more, and that it may uh, aid us in our quest to kill these witches. Agreed. I'm gonna go on record right now and say hashtag content war coming because I feel like this is gonna be some fucked up shit. Uh, I would like to look around and see what kind of crops there are. Is it? Is, have they been harvested? Are they growing? And I want to look so around. If I you make your way crop. towards it, it's, I would say it's about uh, 200 feet or so from the path to even get towards the crops. And so as you make your way over. Um, you are able to look into this small pen of crops and see that at some point it could have been something as simple as root vegetables, tubers of some kind. Um, But now they are um, blackened and a strange white fuzz has appeared on the outside of the leaves. Mm. And the flesh of those that are uh, protruding out is a, what appears to be a mushy brown. Being of fungal biz myself, do I recognize any of this? Roll a fungal biz check. Can I really? <laughs> Please roll a nature check. Okay. Fungal biz. At advantage? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yeah, that's fair. Fungal <laughs> biz <laughs> check. <laughs> Ooh. Says Virgil. Ooh. Yikes. Ah, ah, Eleven. At advantage. <laughs> Looking at it, you can't tell exactly what the fungal biz is. It's definitely some kind of herbot. It's some kind of um, rot that has come to these crops. But any specific form or type, you're unaware. And I will say, even with that, you're able to see that this is unlike any you've ever encountered. Okay. So not the good kind of um, fungal blight. Right. And I will say, <laughs> do you touch it? She licks it. It's- Okay. <laughs> As, when you when you reach down to touch it, the the darkened parts of the leaf begin to almost disintegrate in your hand. And as you wipe away some of the white uh, fur-like, almost moldy portions, and you look down at it, it almost has the consistency and the look to uh, bird shit. The specifically the white furry stuff. Yeah. The, like wet like bird mold. shit or oh. that dry bird shit after it's been like in the, the sun. dry bird shit after mm. it's been in the mm. sun. And does it taste like the dry Are bird? Are you going shit? to eat it? No. <laughs> yes, it does taste like dry bird <laughs> shit. Oh, what the fuck, man? Well, uh, I'm gonna as Farron does that. I'm gonna look around. The scarecrow's missing an arm. Uh, and I'm gonna look and, on the as ground. As you look around, for you see that the arm is clearly on on the ground next to it. I'll uh, go and I'll grab it and I'll just kind of look up and at the scarecrow. And, and it, is, say, it is around late dusk at this point. And uh, I'll look and I'll say, need a hand? <laughs> and I'll, I'll try to reach up and I'll try to reattach it. <laughs> I'd say it's fair. I won't need you to roll for it. It's fairly easy to attach it. It's just a, a quick leather loop into a buckle that attaches it um, on, on back onto the scarecrow and you watch as it, as it now uh, rests itself at attention. There you go. Looking over these two tubers. I've, tubers, I've eh? drawn my sword and I'm looking around and I, I watch as, as Jericho does this and I, I look at him and say, huh, two of a kind, eh? Is that one of your brethren? Well, I mean, he's looking over tubers and my, I was mostly wry. Um, did an okay, okay job. 
Uh, and then one day you up and left. Well, no, that was just when I was keeping eyes on um, things. The halflings that I was keeping eyes on, they preferred, they grew a lot of eye. Um, but now the you got two of arms. The animal pierce the silence around you as once again it lets out a horrified yelp of pain and agony. Um, far louder than you'd expect. Whatever is happening in that shed is, it sounds to be very painful. Well, you quit hanging around and get back to work. Come on, Jericho. Let us see if we can provide some relief here. And I start to make my way towards the barn. As you begin to walk out of the, the patch of crops and past the house, you hear as the front door of the house um, catches in the wind and slowly creaks open before slamming back closed. Mm-hmm. And you continue to walk. Silence, almost pure silence. You listen and you don't even hear rustling in the um, in the tree line. The sounds of bird wings flapping or animals moving within the forest. It's an eerie silence as if everything in the vicinity is waiting in bated breath for what's going to happen to whatever this animal is. As you slowly make your way into the stable behind the house, and you are immediately hit with the stench of, of, uh, of, uh, not fermentation, uh, Decay. no, what's it called? Yeast. Animal poop. Oh. Guana. Manure. Manure, thank you. The stench manure. of manure. That was the, <laughs> the, fertilizer was the word I was thinking of, but manure is perfect. The stench of fertilizer as this entire, um, stable seems to be filled and you you notice that these empty um these empty lots are piled high towards the back with unknown quantities of animal feces as you trudge through it it sludges up against your boots and you catch the constant smell of it as it's rotting in this place and underlying all of that the stench of blood and the stench of something else something almost sweet as you make your way towards where you hear the sound, and now that you're in here, and the sounds of the wind outside are blocked out by the structure of this uh, of this stable, you can hear the soft whimpering and crying pleas for help of what is very clearly an animal. Is it possible to identify the species of this? Roll a nature check. Oh, Jesus. Good luck. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I love that guy. Skills. <laughs> no, it is. <laughs> you don't really have to add my shit. Yeah, but you rolled a natural one, and I don't think that you're nature. Two. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case. Oh. Fuck. No, you you listen and Jeez. in here and with the darkness. Um, pressing in almost oppressively around you, your nose assaulted with these um, with these smells. You listen, but it sounds like it could be any animal. As you slowly make your way towards the very back of the stable, and as you wrench open the door, huddled in the very corner is a dark mass rising this way and that as it lets out loud wails of pain as all of a sudden whatever is torturing it seems to uh, seems to overcome it again it lets out what this close almost sounds like human screams what do you do <clears throat> Derek Wolfling just scared the shit out of me. Lethico, are you alright, Miss Lethico? I would oh, raise tube. my I would raise my shield uh, with my sword drawn and approach the mass and see if I can get a, a closer to it and get a better look. Yeah, I'd move up, shoulder to shoulder. I'm just behind the gentleman making sure that all is well. If you make your way closer, I want you to roll an uh an each check for me. Uh, and I will say because the two of you are going up together, go ahead and roll it at advantage. Thanks, nature. You eh? slowly make your way forward. Mm-hmm. Your your body is heavy with the weight of your armor as you see deep deeper into what is very clearly Only some some sort of gooey substance, gooey um, gooey clear uh, substance mixed in with the blood and the fecal matter of the stable. As you sink deeply into it, the smell at this point is near uh, near overwhelming to the point where I actually need all of you to roll a Constitution saving. Ooh, oh, gosh. Oh, 
God, I'm rolling like shit. Oh my God, so am I. Oh, I did okay. I failed, Con. Do, 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 do you have any racial features again? Shit, smell. 18. It's, it's a 13. Is 18. The I failed. No, but you have advantage on death rolls. Ooh. 19. I also failed. Disease and being poisoned. This really doesn't matter. I feel like I can. 18. Five. Does anybody else fail? I fail. I fail. Uh, you step yeah. forward, Marius. You're now nearly on top of this thing as you begin to look over it and the stench of whatever is coming from it assails your nostrils, you are not able to, um, you're not able to resist the revulsion that you feel looking at this. This this entity in the darkness is clearly a very large shape, uh, smaller than a horse, but significantly larger than a dog. Uh, it's fur is matted in blood and a strange green goopy liquid as you begin to retch. The rest of you smell the smell the scent of vomit and you all begin to follow suit those of you that failed. Uh, adding to the horrific scent in this place. Oh no, that will <laughs> I have to pull my mask aside and rush to the corner and do this. But fortunately I mean, or unfortunately for this being it's all just blood. Yes it is. As you let as you let loose a stream of the toothy gum blood that you had been gulping down just the night previously <laughs> uh. in the bowels of the former house, you begin letting loose torrents of stale, dark brown blood and bile onto the body of this entity. And it's in that moment that you are able to see as it lets out an agonized bleat that this appears to be a sheep in the throes of labor. And as it screams and cries in pain, as it wriggles in the muck and the fecal matter on the ground, and now the bloody vomit, you begin to see the sack spill forth from its nether regions. All this describes. And with it, what should be the infant of a sheep, but its eyes are a strange lilac milky color. And there is no movement. As it begins, as it begins to spill head first out of the womb of the sheep, its head and its neck covered in that thick, clear liquid. And now that you are so close, this is what was causing that almost sweet smell, the sweet smell of birth. But as it gets to the torso, where there should be sheep, there's nothing but wriggling, hanging intestines. The bottom part of this newborn baby sheep not formed as you begin to see that there is some strange sickness about this creature. And there is no life in it as the mother sheep screams and bleats yet again, pushing with all of her might to release this ill-formed infant from her womb. You hear with a, a loud squish as the top part of this newborn sheep lands in the muck and the blood, completely lifeless. The wiggling in its intestines slowly coming to a stop as the mother herself dies in the trial. Okay, well there, I don't need to do what I was gonna do. And the shed around you is quiet. Get yourself together, boy. <clears throat> no time for that. Back There's up. work to be done. There's, there's no work here, it's dead. Let us leave. Still return to the earth. Fair. We should take it outside. Fine. Yes. But there's nothing done. There's nothing we need to be doing here. I'll, um... Not overly carefully. I'll kind of grab a... I, I don't know if I could drag it on my own, but grab the... the fetus in one hand and the leg of the sheep in the other. and. You'd find me right before. Yeah, I'd help you drag it. I'd say it's, it's easy enough to do that. They're still <laughs> connected as the mother died um, in the very final throes of the birth. Um, the partially formed infant sheep is still connected uh, via an umbilical cord of sorts to the inside of this creature, and you're easily able to grab them and pull them. Uh, roll an investigation check on you, please. Being in physical contact. I'd start digging <laughs> outside. 17? Uh, you quickly make your way outside and you find a patch of land that doesn't look to be too overcome with 
uh, the ergot that seems to be eating away at the crops, and you do see that it is slowly reaching out and consuming the, the very grass that sprouts from the earth itself, but it hasn't reached this particular area outside of the stables as you begin to dig. And it doesn't take long for Fair and Lethica and anyone who will help to drag these two uh, animals towards the towards the plot. Though it is slowly approaching evening, there's still enough light in the late dusk for you to get a good look. What did you say your role was? Seventeen. A good look at this um, at the sheep. The sheep itself seems to be in. Um, in good enough condition, as it were. You can definitely tell that it was getting on in years and slightly emaciated as if it hadn't had enough food. But aside from that, uh, it was the the sheer struggle of the birth itself that seemed to have taken the sheep's life. The infant, however, is something altogether unlike anything that you've ever seen. Um, the entire bottom half is completely missing, not as if ripped from the entity, but as if never formed. And there are strange rashes and pox upon the flesh that did form. As you're, as you hold it, you can feel what little uh, furry down had formed on it is almost wiped away, as it's not able to hold purchase on the flesh of the, the dying animal. And all the while, its eyes, this strange lilac pop. Oh, never seen anything like this before. <clears throat> Completely okay. By Lathander, we have a say of death, life. This is nothing but death. I understand what it is now. A dark domain. Is this, uh, is the witches doing this? Or is this some kind of natural stuff? It suddenly stuff. doesn't seem natural to me. deformities, of course, in any animal, people. What's your passive perception, Karen? It is... 17! Uh, as you begin to say this, you feel the intestines that are hanging from the infant sheep as they begin to writhe and undulate. And it looks almost as if they're, they're wiggling in life. Until you begin to see what appears to be two antennae as out of the exposed midriff of this thing a centipede crawls out Ooh. down your arms and legs and disappears almost in an instant into the earth. Did you say that? Yes. Did I? I would, yes, all of you will. I would say for the purposes of horror, yes, you saw that. Oh, fuck! Uh, it was two is... centipedes? Just one. Just one. I suppose that answers our question. <clears throat> one centipede. Philip the work of... Philip, uh, guessed. Or perhaps knew that there were other eggs, and that uh, I believe centipede was a representative of one, the same way that we experienced these beasts with the haunted house with Yes, Jericho. I'll, pull, I'll hand up, uh, no, flip the, the blade around. I'll and you'll see centipede. that etched into the handle are the, uh, the images of a pigeon, a centipede, and a weasel. Absolutely the trademark of a hag. You said there's no work to be done. Ugh. Not with this creature. Uh, it's beyond hell. We we go to Cyril. We find our problem. We end it. Well, uh, let's let's let Miss Farron do what what you suggested to do. The animals and poofy typed creatures are, I presume, are more of your your thing. I, <clears throat> I thank you for digging the hole and laying down now. Would I, do I notice anything about the the lamb that would have like looked the same? I know the same I fucking know, I fruit fly. Too. We've had a fruit fly torturing us in the studio. <laughs> there, yeah, it's yeah. more. It's always more exactly them. where you're looking. I know. Yeah. It's always like yeah. right it's literally here. just sit, sitting yeah. there with like it. It thinks that it's fine. Did you get it? There's one right here. Probably There's not. one on the See, stand, what the yeah. fuck? Man! There's giant. It's like taunting us. Um, Would... Anywho. Yeah, so on the lamb, does anything uh, remind me of the of the crops? Like, the whitishness of mm, the eyes, like, matching question. the white of the... So the eyes are actually like a pale lilac. Oh, lilac. And they're, mm. they're opaque. Very similar in color to these cards. <gasps> oh, beautiful. I knew it! God, the cards are horrible. <laughs> <laughs> um... um but I would I would say you. It seems to be different, 
but it could potentially be connected. Was the color of the flame in the kitchen when <laughs> Vesla, I think, I presume it was Vesla, was cackling? Was that oh, yeah. a similar color so to, like the a to the purple? Yes. Here. Boom. Oh. Bada bing, bada boom. Knowing. Mikey gets a gold star. Having <laughs> encountered a hag at this point once, would it be reasonable to think that, like, the sphere of influence before was just in the home we were in? Would we think that she's in our immediate vicinity? Or would it be reasonable roll, to think it's like. Roll an arcana check. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, do we get. We had just like bad feelings when we walked into the house. Dumb as a bag of rocks. I'd say you get a you get a very similar um, sense of heebie-jeebies. Okay. What did you roll? It's a four. (laughs) No, I mean your your familiarity with hags is not great. But Della told us that the people of Cyril were dealing with these issues. Yes, she mentioned to you that there were essentially a list of things that. the Archbishop was concerned with, and he believed that they could all be tied back in some way to Mother Midnight. And it was the whole province, right? Right. It wasn't just Cyril. Like, Cyril may have had it, like, bad yes. or worse. No. So it was the entire province of full sense right. that is dealing yeah. with whatever is happening. But it is so strong and it is so dark that he believes that it couldn't just be the work of one witch. It had to be the work of the witch. Got it. Well, and so I will say you you are able to uh, place these uh, the bodies of these sheep into the hole and return them to the earth. Um, and I, as I do that, I would just kind of take one of my long nails and, and just kind of do a light scratch on each of the bodies and um, and just kind of whisper, you know, whisper to myself um, and to Porthos to to return them, let them walk again in, in new life. Mm-hmm. I think that is the best we can do to give these creatures some relief. Death has its purpose, but suffering does not. Should we investigate this house, or should we move on? I do I'd not like think... to know what's causing this. I don't think we know what's wrong. causing this. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I, just, I think we know what's causing this. Pegs. Pegs. <laughs> if we knew how they were affecting the land, I, I surmise that the reason for this creature's suffering was because there was something that, in the food that it ate, the feed would have come from this same affected plants. There's something definitely wrong with it. I'm not clear. The people are being affected. The children getting sick. Uh, maybe they're just so reason. full of centipedes. You know, I, I know that you sometimes say things and you just, you know, you, you try to help and you just say whatever's on your mind, but I actually don't think you're incorrect this time. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm dead fucking serious this time. I'm not cracking wise. I mean, those sheep, uh, they were full of centipedes. That's just the one. One's enough. I guess. I, I wouldn't care to go into that house after the last house we ventured in with vermin. I'd, I'd rather keep walking, but that's... Uh, I'll, I'll go where, where the group would like to go. When I looked at the plant before, like, was I looking at something like leafy or... So you were looking at the leafy bits that were coming off of and sprouting out of the ground, and most of it fell away, but there was like a thick, almost mold-like covering, mm. uh, and that's what you touched. Okay, I was curious if there was anything like, like fruit of a plant, like whether that's like a corn husk or like a gourd or. Uh, there were bits of um, of tuber-like uh, oh, tuber. vegetables, um, and they were brown and mushy with rot. Brown and mushy with rot. Okay. I, I'm with Jericho. I think that the chances that what we're looking for happens to be in this house right here is slim to none. I'd prefer to talk to the Archbishop first and gather some information. We could certainly check it out and uh, move forward, but I can't imagine what would come from it. Should we burn this corrupt? 
if you think that this could be causing a part of the problem, should we just leave it? More sense is that if this is a big problem, there's probably a lot more of where this comes from. So burning this field, we're going to spend the next couple of years burning a whole fucking province down. I think Briggs is right. <clears throat> I don't know that it'll do us any good if it releases whatever this is into the air. Spreads over the land. And at the end of the day, remember what they said. This head of the snake. That's this right. is a symptom. It's not It's not the cause. I think we should go. I agree. And with I, that... Oh, I, I agree also. Yeah, but I also look at the, the house and think... The fact that no one came out... Hearing such suffering tells me that we don't need to go inside. I think we you're right, on. Miss Lethica. And you make your way back to the road and continue on your path. You make conversation and you try to shrug off the sense of dread and gloom that's now infused you. The overall jubilance of Philip and Adela slowly fading from your memory, reminding you now the kind of land that you're in, and the stakes that have been placed before you. And it's hard to remember what it felt like to laugh and to joke and to smile as you walk in quiet for a bit, occasionally making conversation, but heavy in thought, as time passes hour after hour after hour. Evening firmly in place as the midnight hour approaches, the nighttime hours, the darkness of the land. You see the flickering of torches off in the tree line of what you know to be provincial towns. Occasionally you hear the sounds of people speaking in the trees, but nobody stops you, nobody bothers you. Till finally you see the flickering of lights in the very, um, the very inside of the tree line. One torch after another, after another, after another. And you watch and you wait, and then you see what appears to be a line of around 20, maybe 30 people, all dressed in pure white robes, each of them carrying a torch, darting in and out of the tree line, singing a soft and mournful song. You're able to catch the a couple of words, but it seems to be their chanting, oh blinding light, over and over again, and then a mix of other words in another language, similar to Latin, but not necessarily Latin, <laughs> as they chant and chant and chant. And then as they come closer, not towards you, but walking along the tree line, you watch as they begin to wind down along a path and head deeper into just the very beginning rec recesses of the forest. You begin to hear the sounds of a woman crying, a soft and mournful, wretched crying of pain, of heartbreak. You're close enough now that all of you can easily see that she stands beside a man whose arms are wrapped around her as he tries to give her comfort. And just to their side is another man, all of them garbed in white robes, all of them singing, as he carries what appears to be the form of a small child. As they begin to march in unison, singing, drowning out the cries and the whimpers of the woman and the pleading begging of the man as they walk deeper into the forest. What do you do? Is the child making any sounds? The child appears to be limp in the man's arms. How far away are they from us? I would say they're about a hundred feet from you, close enough for you to still see. Um, but, uh, they look, so you are, you're almost walking parallel with them. Okay. And as, as they get towards you, they're walking directly into the woods. And I would say with the illuminate of their, the illumination of their torchlight, it looks like they're walking down towards some kind of a river. Does anyone look like they're in charge or in the lead? They look, there is someone in the lead. They're walking in almost a line and it, towards the very end is the, what appears to be a woman, a man, and then another man holding a child. And the woman and the man are in obvious distress. 
standing next to the man holding the form of the child. There are a few people behind them. Uh, everyone but those three people and the child are holding torches and they're all singing this mournful song. Does it appear to be something religious? It does. I would say it's, it's easy enough. You don't have to roll for it. Um, Obline, I will have you roll a religion check to see if you, if that rings any bells to you. Mm. The song O Blinding Light. Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, oh, God. L M N O P Q R. Okay. Ha! I am rolling like shit. I got a six. I haven't rolled oh. higher than a five. You, you, you. Listen, you listen to the song, and there's something about it that seems familiar, but you can't quite place it. Hours. It's like a funeral. Do you think we should ask if they need help? I, I, I don't know if, if these, they're all human. From what you can tell, they're all robed in white. Most okay. of them have um, hoods up over their head, and they are almost kneeling in prayer over the candles that they hold as they as they walk and sing. Um, and they all seem to be um, overcome with a sense of sadness. I want to respect Lethica's concerns and not be evangelical, but I also want to help these people. Maybe, is it? Is it improper if we just stick to the bushes and just take a look at what's going on? It, it could be. I don't know. I, I, don't don't think, I don't think we have to hide ourselves. I just... If we go to them and they ask us to participate, I, I would say yes, that's all. I agree. I concur. I don't think they're going to want us then. I know those whales. They're not, loss. They're not going to want if there's... Poor, poor little one that, that, that's, that's lost in a similar way to the little sheep. They're not going to want us to be around them. I agree. Especially not Virgil. Maybe we just let them be. Do you think that Philip and Adela truly grasp the gravity of the suffering that is happening in their lands? I understand that they... Uh, brought us here to deal with this problem, but they do not act like it. I don't want to be ungrateful, but I see where you're coming from. It's almost as if they sent us into that home without fully divulging all of the information they knew. I mean, we were a little over our heads in, in what we were presented with. It's, it, I think they knew more than they wanted to let on. I agree with that very much. And they knew what to dangle in front of all of us in order to commit us to this quest. I want to go on record and say that I'm not entirely sure I believe everything they're saying. I find it hard to believe that a cup that I've been searching for for nearly a century just happens to be in this man's hands. I'm trying to remain hopeful and avoid negativity, but no, what are the chances? You don't have to convince me. If well, he has the item that he says that he has for me. A single ring could probably solve all of their problems now. I do not understand why they do not use so much power to undo it and instead lean on folks such as ourselves. It's a very wise point. Well, is it doesn't seem like this place really operates how the, the world we come from works. Isn't that right, Yorgrim? Isn't these dark domains? It's, it's, it feels like we're in a, a fairy tale land. The rules are different here, and from what we've already seen, the Druskin vaults don't lack for power. So if they could use them, they probably would easily. My presumption is that they guess. My guess is that just can't make use of the men for us. No doubt that they have them, but I think nothing is quite as it seems with those two. It is a fine hypothesis. On the other hand, I wonder if they just don't want to get their hands dirty and risk themselves in this attempt. I, I think they mean well and they're good folk. They've been, they've shown us quite a kindness, and if you don't mind me saying, I think that 
we could either take a look at what's going on, we get more information as we make our way to see Earl, or we move on. Well, I'm not opposed to gathering more info, but I feel wrong doing it discreetly. That's if, just how I feel. If we go to them, then we must go open the arm. I mean, I disagree. If we want to learn something from them, we don't have to come through the trees. We just hang back and watch. We don't really rustle any feathers. There's, there's no reason to. Question for the dungeon master. Yes. Do we get the sense, will we be able to just kind of like walk by and just take a look? Or will we need to like... You guess that under cover of darkness, they're, you have to remember, they're carrying, it is dark right now. They're carrying um, candles. So it's illuminated where they are. Where you are, They, unless they have some extraordinary vision, they wouldn't even be able to tell you where they are. So it would be easy to um, make your way towards the tree line just right into the tree line itself and look down upon whatever it is that they're doing. That would be very easy to do. Well, I don't think we need to sneak around like creatures in the underbrush. Let's just walk on by, see if there's anything we can do to help, and if not, we don't cause them any stress by our unique appearance. Thank you, Jericho. I think that's very wise. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll lead the way. No, pumpkins, get out of here. And I'll try to, like... If I've, had, if I've had my my dancing lights I out, I'll get rid of them. Okay, good. So then we'll just go and 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 try to not sneak, but just walk by and see if, what we can see. They seem. I'm not even gonna make your old stealth check because they are consumed in what they're doing. They're not looking mm-hmm. for you or paying attention to you. You make your way towards the tree line as you watch as they walk along a small path down to the river. As you stand there overlooking what they're doing. They all submerge themselves waist deep, one after another, into the waters. They sing, O blinding light, in a mournful tune, quietly. And as the tail end of the procession passes you, you can you can hear the racked sobs of the woman and a soft, low crying of the man next to her. As finally, the three of them are emerged waist deep. The man in front of them. Let's out a um, lets out a a, lar- a loud call in a language that none of you seem to understand. As he raises the form of the child high up in the air, as he looks towards the moon and begins to say a prayer. Every single one of the people in procession dips their candle into the water, extinguishing the light. As they all look up toward the moon, and it is easy to see for anyone familiar with religion that around their necks are the silver symbol of the god Foltis, as they all begin to pray in unison. It feels like minutes, hours pass, but it's a short amount of time before finally they unwrap the form of the child, and you see that his head is tilted backwards, his eyes open. A pure opaque purple light you see the rise and fall of the stomach. You hear the soft, shallow breathing as his body convulses and jerks, overcome with some strange sickness. You can see bits of hair that have fallen away with some illness that you're unfamiliar with as they slowly lower his body down into the water. And you hear as they chant, Um, cleansing the body, attempting to wash away the illness as the mother and the father cry. They hold him under for what feels like too long as the body goes still. They rise, they raise him out, but you can still see his small chest rising and falling with shallow breaths. The woman reaches out and places a kiss on his forehead and you hear her call out, Eric, Please wake up for mommy, please, Eric, please. But nothing. No sounds, just the shallow breathing and the rising and falling of his chest. And she drops to her knees in the water. She covers her face with her hands and she sobs so loudly that everyone sucks in air with bated breath and they watch. As he continues to breathe and shake and convulse, but he does not heal. Their prayer was not answered this night. 
as she calls out in utter agony, begging for Fultis to heal her son, screaming into the darkness for someone, anyone, to save her family. As you hear the voice of the man that's holding her, or holding him, it has not worked. We will try again. We will not stop until he's healed. She reaches up and grabs his hand. Please, please save him. We return to Cyril. Do not speak of this. Let us continue to sing. As they wrap up the cold, convulsing form of the now wet child back into his blanket, and the possession again forms a line as they all rise out of the water. The stillness and the quiet of the night, pierced by the racking sobs of the mother whose son is sick and cannot be cured, as once again the song of O blinding light pierces the night and drowns out her sobs. So as they're I guess at the point when it would have been loudest. I would say singing, you're you're far I, enough away that them? you could easily speak. So you can you can talk without to, fear of anything. Oh, that. I'm just trying to recognize this song. I would say roll a religion check. <clears throat> Thirteen. Uh, it is you recognize it as being a uh, a song, a common song that is sung to Foltis. Uh, pleading for guidance or healing or help. Um, and so it is clear that they're doing some sort of healing procession uh, in an attempt to cure this this infant. Um, I would say it's also um, easy to tell that uh, the, the words that they're speaking are some form of their uh, religious language. Um, and you, I imagine with that role would know bits and pieces of it and you can tell that this is very dire, that they're only doing this sort of ritual, this sort of procession as a last ditch effort to save the life of this child. There is uh, much good we can do here. If we can cut the head off, so to speak, we can end this kind of suffering. I think you're right. This is far worse than I had feared. This Mother Midnight is worse than a lot of things that I've seen, and I've seen a lot of real, real bad stuff. The wailing and the chanting slowly fades into silence as the procession of people, of Fultons, um, makes their way, weaving in and out of the tree line, heading in the direction that you're going, towards Cyril. Are we ahead of them now? So the people kind of walking past that happen. They're they're ahead of you, but they're sticking to the tree line, which winds in different directions. So you don't know if it's a shortcut, or they're taking the long way, or they plan to stop somewhere um, overnight. But for whatever reason, this is the place that they wanted to be when they did this ritual. You know, your path is along the road. Let us continue on the path. It is not far away from the witching hour. And that's true. It is not. I think that. We don't want to cause these folk any more stress or sorrow or fear. If only I look more normal. Perhaps a tune might might do them good. But there's no time for that. Sure, we should get to see. You. Keep walking. You make your way back to the path, and as the shroud of darkness as night descends, you make your way. In an even more sorrowful silence. But there is, for some of you, still that glint of hope. That child was not dead. If you stop the witch, maybe you could stop the affliction that is overcoming that child. And are there more like him? Are there more like poor Eric that are out there suffering and families that are praying to Fultis, hoping to bring their child back from the brink of death? And you could be the salvation that they need. You could be the people to bring peace to this land, to heal these crops, to heal the animals, to heal the sick. If you were to only make it to Cyril. I uh, would pull out my banjo if I feel like we're uh, far enough away where it wouldn't be an earshot. And I would pluck a few strings and a tune. I'd say, 
You know, that reminds me of a, a tune that they used to sing, the halflings. Some of the halflings would sing it and do a little something. Oh, sisters, let's go down. Let's go down. Come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down. Down to the river to pray. I don't think it was Foltis. It was Eldath or some other god. Maybe Shantia. I am a nice song like that way. Often did uh, that should motivate us to to figure this shit out. There's something I don't know. I maybe just put together is uh, did you in did you in character mention the the pink light or the purple light? I would have mentioned that. Yeah. I think would does it also look similar to the well, runic it's purple light? But it's like a pinky purple light. Yeah. Was it similar to the color of it's the big color. rune on the ground? Yes. Under yeah. the massive thing. Yes. So, we gotta keep an eye out for that color, all right? If, if we're putting things together, that lavender color, this one right here. And I hold up a, 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 a lavender note card <laughs> with uh, the Druskin Vault timing written on it. Fuck off. I'll say, um, if we see this color at all, even if it could be totally unrelated, we gotta keep an eye on it and take a look, all right? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Agreed. I take, I take the lavender card and put it into my bag of holding. So we, so as we, lo- if we were able to get a sense, I would want to see: Are they all entirely human? They, I would say it would be easy to see that they are all entirely human. And the whole Lockwood family and Philip and Adela so far. Everyone that you've met so far has been human, except for I guess the coachman and the frog. And the vagrant so far. Yeah. And the hag. And the weasel. Yeah, so uh, except for all of those things that aren't human, everything's been human. That we've yeah. murdered. Yeah. Yeah. Accurate. Destroyed. A couple of statues, a beaver. <laughs> <laughs> well, but Filthy Jasper, he was half human. He wa- well, he was part human. Well, he was human half. Half, I don't know. That's generous. <laughs> and so with that, you continue to walk, listening to the songs that Jericho sings. Soft, mournful tunes. Let's go down. As the hour turns towards the witching hour. Slowly, interspersed in the tree line, you begin to see the lights of Cyril up ahead. Still far off, you still have, I would say, about an hour's travel to get there. But you can see the faint lights of what looks to be a large city. Far larger than anything that you've seen since you got here. And then you begin to see, just off to the side of the road, a large hunched figure rocking this way and that. And a deep guttural noise. What do you do? Does it sound, does the noise sound bestial or It human? does, it sounds very bestial. Hmm. Be aware this could be some creature. It is sitting, or not sitting, but hunched appears to be hunched right along the edge of the of the road you would be walking so we'll directly pass. past it how how far away is it i would say it's about 100 feet since that I, seems to be what i like to use as a marker for this session like it's a good, <laughs> it's a good far distance. 108 feet away i would have uh, <laughs> drawn my sword and shield and raised it up and said uh, who goes there very loudly enough for them to hear us you hear a cracking of bone and a deep, almost guttural swallow is in the darkness, you hear. We don't mean you harm, we're traveling to Cyril. Please, show yourself. Four toes on my hand. Jericho, maybe light him up. Uh, just, with just light, just light. <laughs> yeah. Virgil, no, no! <laughs> is that not what I, is that not what I said? <laughs> uh, and I would like to uh, like uh, wave my hand and I'll say, uh, my friend Sir Mary is here. He's a he's a good knight and he just wants to help you. And I use bardic inspiration as yes. I cast uh, dancing no, uh, I really dancing lights. I really want to eat some bread. And the four glowing ah, pumpkins. It's gonna be fun. 
fine. It's gonna be totally fine. That'll come from the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'd like to have my dancing jack o' lanterns. Uh, as is it sixty feet or thirty feet? Um, I'm gonna write what I think it is now. Oh, 120. <laughs> Holy shit. Don't yeah. eat the stones. Don't eat the stones. So I'd they like go to, down very hard. I'd like to illuminate him as I inspire uh, Marius. And you do this, and you see that there appears to be this strange woolen blanket over this large mass. And as you illuminate it, it shrugs it off of its shoulders, and you see what looks to be a very thin and almost emaciated old man sitting cross-legged on the road, and in its lap, it's covered in blood, blood all over its face, looks to be the body of a rotting and decaying corpse of one of these strange um, sheep. At first, it looks to be like sheep-like forms, but it appears to be a malformed goat as it is ripping chunks off of this off of this thing. You can see where the pox and the lesions have affected its skin and where parts of it are um, are have not fully formed from its birth. Its strange lilac purple eyes dead in the skull of this entity as this man shovels the flesh down its throat as he turns and he looks up towards you. Do you want to eat it with me? And the words that come out of his mouth do not look like they should be made by his vocal cords. Almost as if it's not his voice, a strange madness having overcome him. And you see just faintly the strange lilac bits to his eyes. I would I would sheath my sword and, and run to the side of this, this poor wretched creature. And then, Ooh, I've and been eating this for an hour. So, so you must- Would you like to have the turkey at Christmas time? And no. he stands up and he fraily bows to you. So you- Have a leg of lamb. You, you will like it. It will make you full. And he starts to dance on spindly legs and you see long yellowish claws as he dances in a circle around this thing. So, have a feast. Have a feast. Please, just just take a minute. He sits I, down really quickly. His dust spurts up around him. He jumps back up onto his spindly legs. Rend your flesh, rend your flesh, bleed! And he cuts himself, and then he starts eating again. Stop, you! I think you're very confused. This isn't... Please, just just for a moment. And, and uh, I would like to try to uh, very cautiously and gently place a hand on his shoulder. And uh, you, you do, and he immediately grabs it. You can feel the long yellowed tendrils of his fingernails as he looks up at you. Hungry. It's, it's, it's all right. I I understand how that feels. I'm I'm here to help, and I will attempt to use lay on hands uh, and use five HP to try to cure a disease affecting the creature. I want to try it. Uh, okay. I will say that I wasn't expecting that. Um. You watch as a little bit of the grayish blue color of his eyes begins to appear through the purple. Ooh. And he shakes his head and he looks at you and he looks down at himself and he begins to retch as he smells the scent of this decaying corpse he's been holding in his hands. And he looks up towards you and he, he grabs your face. The voices are quieting. I know, I know. It's all right. Let it out. While he, while he's and he starts I'm retching. You can feel the bones in his back. <laughs> let it out. Let it out. It's all right. Uh, you see as he begin, as he continues to puke, you, it, it uh, assails your nostrils at first, the scent of blood, his own blood, this frail form of this old man as he continues to, to vomit at your feet. Um, I would just stay with him and try to help him. And if, if it ceases... I would try to help him to his feet and see if he is someone who lives in Cyril. Um, if it ceases, I, you know, he might. I will, after a while, it does seem to cease. You hear his labored breathing as he stares down. Occasionally, like, he looks up and towards the tree line as if he's hearing something or seeing something that you don't see or hear. Can, can we take you home? Do you, do you live in Cyril? We're on our way there. We can, we can make sure you're all right. Yes. Uh... Do I live in Cyril? What is Cyril? I don't know Cyril. Yes, I know Cyril. He wants to come for it. 
no, not again. And he begins to grab his head and start rocking back and forth as you see the bits of purple light once again returning to his eyes and then it shakes off again. Whatever coming to him, uh, he's able to push away with you standing near him. I, I am so sorry. You are very sick and we will do everything we can to help you. I, I look to, to, to Lethica. I, I don't know how else I can help. What is your name? What is the last thing that you remember? What's in a name? What's in a name? <laughs> what is doing this to me? Help me! And he reaches out for you. You can see the the blue of his veins. It's his skin so thin over his bones. He's near transparent as he reaches out to you. Make them stop! Wait. When he cut himself on his arm. Oh yeah, he's he's bleeding profusely from his arm. So it is bleeding. It's oh yeah. Like, okay. Lethica, I, I I think that at the very least we should try to get him to, to, to Cyril. Uh, look, if things are even worse there, it may not help, but we can't leave him here on the side of the road. I agree. No, we can't. No, we can't. And he throws his head back, and with his nails, you watch as he slices through his throat. And as blood begins to spore down or spill down along his chest, he looks towards you. No! And he attempts to speak, but all you hear is the gurgling of blood as it erupts out of his throat. His eyes roll back, and there's nothing but a pure lilac light shining within. And as you hold him, you begin to see the wiggling and the movement as a centipede crawls up out of his throat and begins to skitter down his chest. I just try and grab for it if I can. Roll a dexterity contest, I guess. Oh. Just be advised, oh. it has a hundred. <laughs> and you only have two. Uh, just straight dex would be 13. You attempt to grab onto it, and you you catch it for a second. Um, I'm going to have you take, probably, okay. definitely. Madness damage. You uh, you're going to take... You're going to take six points of piercing damage as oh, it wiggles shit. around in your palm and you feel its uh, sharp uh, needle-like legs dig into your palm as it begins to almost, it feels like almost sucking out blood, but it's mm. more pumping some kind of venomous poison into you. As you quickly okay. let it go, it flops to the ground, flips over once or twice, and digs into the deep earth. You're as Marius, you hold on to the body of this thing, its head Ugh. thrown backwards, the uh, severed mm. neck nearly um, nearly rended all the way through an almost supernatural force. I would, uh, uh, as he had ripped open his own throat, I would, uh, you would see the muscles in my neck tense and I would very gently lay him down. And as soon as he is, he is resting on the ground, my left hand would go to my mouth and I would quickly back away from him. Oh, no. Oh. Take some space. These people are very sick. Is the old man gone? I would say he's dead. He's, his body is still <laughs> there on, uh, on the ground. I, I would we look down and he skitters into the darkness. Right. Right. You, you look down, he flips over onto his back and out of his spine, legs protrude and he skitters backwards okay. into the night. I quit. Oh yeah? <laughs> Sure. Uh, Marius okay. says no, that does not happen. No, that does not happen. After laying him down, I would continue to take several steps back away from the 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 the, the blood and the the rendered flesh and cover my my mouth. Would I? Yeah. Would would that have, like if I had seen that? Would that would I have get any like recollection of what Petunia did to me? Um, I would say. No, but I will say you don't even need to roll for it. You remember that Adela told you that there were adults going mad, mm -hmm. overcome with strange madness. He, he, he did not seem to be himself or alone. It was as if a separate entity was inside him. I would say you'd get Very the clearly. sense that there were many entities inside him. I would like to look at Marius to see if his eyes are a little bit red. And are your eyes a little bit red? A little bit more red. Than it's they very are. clear that that Marius is struggling against the uh, smell of the blood. Okay. Uh, I would uh, I would kind of step like in in between Marius and the body and say, "Sir Marius, do you want to do you want to take a bit of a walk there? You 
it's when you say this that I catch myself and uh, uh, no, no, I'm I'm fine, Derek. Thank you. I'm all right. And I take another step back. I'm all right. Thank lying, you for asking. Lying at your feet is now the crumpled body of this old man and the semi-consumed body of this rotting, sickly corpse of what appears to be a goat. As profane as it might sound, I propose that we look and see if there's anything that we might learn from these bodies. Careful if the if that goat <clears throat> has a centipede in it. There. Pretty bad news. <laughs> Are you alright, Mr. Yorgum? <laughs> You sound uh, like you've been poisoned. Are you okay? I don't know. <laughs> You're speaking very slowly. Ah! <laughs> um, yeah. Five fingers? Is that what you had up? Well, uh, two of them were up. Yes, there were five fingers. It's only a scratch. Fine. Well, I, I will. Uh, I will keep guard. I will secure perimeter. Uh, let me let me know if you need me or you find anything of interest. <clears throat> I have a feeling like this guy's not the only one. Della told us that there were people going mad. This is just one of them. Do Who we knows what's going on in the city? It's it's like a big like a full size <clears throat> thing. At this point, now where you're at, you can see through the tree line, and it is not much further ahead. What appears to be this uh, almost like a stone. Um, stone walls that encircle this huge city. And inside of it would appear to be large stone and um, stone, like mortared, mortared buildings. Mm -hmm. And cresting over the hill, I would see in plain view at, towards the very back of the city at the far end is a beautiful shining in um, torchlight marble cathedral. I mean, that's a big city. Who knows how fucking bad it is there, especially if it's infectious and spreads. Can't even imagine. Fortunately, I am wearing a mask. Do we <laughs> think that this man went... <laughs> well, what? You get disadvantaged, right? <laughs> and you got it! Boom! Um, wow, look at that! Do we think that he went mad just from... Are we still... Very, very fair <laughs> enough here. About us? Huh? No. no, she smashed him. Oh, Good job. Uh, I, <laughs> that was straight give, give, give me one of these. Yeah. <laughs> um, do we think that the man went mad because he went into the forest, or just because he is also afflicted by whatever is cursing these lands? That was no madness I've ever seen. I think it's these creatures crawling inside of them. But I'm asking, how to... did they get there? Well, Adela said that it, they had these problems in Cyril. Uh, so, I mean, clearly, I mean, unless they're all going out in the woods. I saw that group, though, and they were fine. Sure. It seems to be the children and the elderly that we've seen so far. And it is at this time that you begin to see the flickering of lights as your attention is turned towards the tree line in front of you, the tree line that is just to the sides of Cyril proper. And what sounds like yelling and arguing. Uh, while you guys are discussing all of this, my back would be towards you. I'm listening, but I'm, I'm intentionally trying to avoid sight of what we just witnessed. And I guess my ears would peer, perk up to hearing this disturbance. Uh, I think, yeah. Uh, Marius, uh, what is that? And I'll turn to... Yeah, I would try to listen closer and see if I can gather anything being a little bit farther away from the rest of the group. You listen closely as you begin to hear the yells and the and the shouts as you realize it's not just in front of you. It's on all sides of you as near 50 people surround you carrying torches. You hear the muttering and the yelling, witches, I knew it was witches, kill them. Destroy them! No, bring them back to Archbishop! He'll want to see! And you hear, and you see women, men, children surround you with pitchforks and, and torches as out from the middle of them steps 
a large man in darkened leathers, dark black hair, beautifully uh, chiseled features, piercing green eyes, as he steps forward. Now, let's not be too hasty. It's clear when we look at them that they are in league with the witches. Look at them, he's rotting as we speak, and this one, a damn peer. Don't put up a fight, we'll end your life here. Simply get in these manacles. No, 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 I mean, no. No, do not argue with me. No, and just let me explain I am William myself. Van Brunt, and you hear as everyone yells and cheers, William, oh, he's so handsome. <laughs> as he steps okay. forward and swings manacles in his arms, his rippling biceps nearly bursting out of his, um, out of his linen shirt, his chest, um, completely open in a V, you can see the curly uh, tendrils of his chest hair poking out in a beautiful uh, mass of deliciousness, sweat gleaming in the torchlight. What, what Briggsy is just trying to say is that we're here to see the Archbishop. Huh. They have names. Wait, yeah, yes. The witch has named them. No, and no, you hear as no, everyone yells, yes, the witch has named them. No, we're here to help. We're here to, we're here to stop the issue with you, the witches. You hear a muttering and a, and, a, and a bit of arguing. They're not here to help. Don't listen to their foul pleas for justice. No, no, my name is Samarius Renethi. I'm a knight of, of, I'm here oh, to help. As if a witch would employ a knight, <laughs> let alone a knight of vampire. I look at Van, I, sorry, I look at uh, Briggsy like, <laughs> I was thinking of Anders. I look at Briggsy oh, like, yes. like, like, did you not just hear what he said? He's a, they, it's a contradiction. They slowly start to close in around you, Ethan. Of, of course, of which we're not hiring. Right. Right. No, 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 we are here. The Lord and Lady of this entire land has sent us here. Yes. To meet with the Archbishop. That's we can probably kill every single one of you. No, no, so no. I suggest no. Did you hear way. what he said? No, he didn't mean kill it. Kill every it's single one stop of us. Stop it. Oh, no. 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 What he's trying to say is, oh, I'm a scarecrow. I give up. Get <laughs> them. And you feel as as near 50 people begin to overpower you, children, women, men, pulling at you as they begin to wrestle you towards the ground. Yorgrim, you feel the feel of a, a large boot on your back as he presses you down into the dirt and grabs your arms and begins to manacle you. No, don't and resist! And as he moves from each of you, he steps uh, into you harder, pressing you into the earth. The there are too many people here for you to fight them off, even with what magic that you have. As the women and children drag you into the dirt, sitting on your bodies, forcing you down, you feel your weapons removed from you. You feel bits um, and pieces of your um, your armor removed from you. Did they try and take my stone? Uh, no, they're just pressing down on your stone um, <laughs> as they begin to <laughs> manacle your hands. And as the dust settles, you're all face down in the dirt, all manacled together. You're gonna regret this! As you I see you a, a wormy man walk up beside William, the man who'd called himself William Van Brunt. Uh, uh, uh sir? Uh, what, what do we do with them now? We're going to take them to Cyril. We're going to take them to Archbishop Renault. And we'll claim the reward and the renown as we watch them burn. And as he says it, everyone screams burn as they yank you to your feet and pull you up behind them as William Van Brunt holds on to the chains and tugs you forward. This is fine. This is fine. It, we, we, the, the, you're making a mistake. As soon as you get us to the Archbishop, we will explain everything. I, I swear to Speak all this holy to me, here. foul creature. You will suck the blood from someone other than me no. and those of Cyril this night. No, that's not why I'm here. Please. Ha, says the damn peer. And everyone erupts in laughter. What? Well, you know, we, we didn't put up a fight, so you can be a little bit kinder to us. Kind? Bit of to the minions of a witch? <laughs> well, I'm not, a, I'm not a minion of a witch uh -huh. anymore. A scarecrow <laughs> claims not to be the minion of a witch. No, I mean, and see, uh, th that, 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 weird, that weird crow with the horrible uh, demon eyes, I'm not with him. 
Fritz, no, don't land on, don't land on my head. <laughs> he walks towards you, the sounds of the chains um, rattling as he kicks you square in the gut. Ah! You're gonna regret this. That's all. Let, let me don't tell you. you. I mean, are there like hundreds of people or like, how, how, how big is what, this it's, it's a gigantic mob of people. Um, I will, I will shut up and I just won't say a thing and I'll just be led. Remember what I said about going with things when, before we got here. And I just close my eyes and sort of let them carry me. Do I, uh, do I see my shovel? Anyway, like, really do I see detailed. who's holding my shovel? I, I would say a couple people over, you see um, a dirty middle-aged man who's like looking at your shovel and like every time, um, every time William mentions witch, he raises it into the, into the air and, and cries witch um, as they all chant, but it doesn't seem to be moving uh, further away from you. They seem to be keeping all of your stuff roughly together with you. No one seems to be stealing your things as much of making sure that you don't have it. No, um, don't take I, my bag, please. And it was... <laughs> <laughs> None of them seemed to go anywhere near your bags. And it felt like when you were when you were dragged to the ground, it was mostly the children that were taking your stuff. Uh, I'd shout out to the guy holding my shovel and just say, you be careful with that. You shut up, witch. I'll be taking it back. <laughs> witch, I, I, shut I, your I, mouth, <laughs> witch. Not a witch. <laughs> Yogram, please. Look at his green skin. He's a dumb witch. Really? <laughs> stop, stop. Yeah, I would try. Yogram, I wouldn't try and, like, explode out of the chains, but I would definitely, like. He's trying I mean, to conjure his magic. Get him. And a bunch of the kids will jump on you and try and drag you to the I'll ground. I'll swim. Wow. <laughs> These kids, are you trying to drive some kids? Fuck, get off of me! Stop, stop. Fighting will not help us here, please! The mists pour off me. And you're doing this as, uh, William. But I definitely tried to fight these kids William is going to rush up behind you. He's going to kick you in the back of your knees as you fall forward onto the ground. Your chains pull as all of your friends slam into the ground with you as he digs his boots into the back of your knees. You will calm yourself. Yorgrim, it's gonna be okay. We'll just we'll just clear it all up with Archbishop Vanal. Like he he's he he knows we're coming. Jericho is exactly right. Please. What was your name again? He looks down yeah, at you. And head. as you turn to look towards him, he looks down at you, he spits in your face, and then yanks you back up to your feet and begins to drag you with almost an inhuman strength towards the um, towards the uh, entrance to Cyril. One of the kids is like, take his tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I activate the ancestors. The mists pour off me. I rip out of the chains. And uh. as and as you are pulled forward, all of you, you are surrounded by these wow. people. And you begin to notice these appear to be just normal people. Their clothes are a little bit more in tattered. They look a little more hungry than than you would expect for people living in a town such as this. Uh, but they don't look emaciated. They don't look on the verge of starvation, just like they're not getting quite enough. And they look ravenous for blood. As, you, as some of them look Ooh, between you, you see that a few of them are Still almost um, insanely incensed with the need for your demise. Well, Whereas others look fearful and afraid, the children uh, verge between um, invigorated by William von Holt and, uh, why did I call him that? Uh, William Van Brunt. Uh, I just watched something that had a von Holt in it. But anyway, William Van, <laughs> Hunt, uh, van Brunt, as, as if they, they emulate to be like him, but they're still children and they're still afraid of you, all of them believing you to be witches or minions of witches or exactly what you are. Zombies, vampires, and animated scarecrows as they drag you towards the town. We're gonna, it's gonna get us so out of tune. <laughs> um, and yeah, as one of the kids is attempting to play the banjo, no, 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 plucking the strings be... a little bit too hard. Like this horrible, um, like demonic cacophony <laughs> starts going, and like all the runes on the banjo <laughs> start flashing. <laughs> the the oh. bridge collapses. <laughs> 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 they take my cutlass away, and then every six seconds, I'm like, no, come back! And I just sit on the back of my leg every six seconds. Ah, oh, fuck! Ah. And, and that happens as 
they do not quiet. You would think it, it takes about 30 minutes to march you into town and you would expect the the um, the, zeal- the zealousness of this to die down, but it doesn't. They scream for your blood, they call out to witches. And as you make your way through these cobbled streets, you are able to see this city in its, in its fullness, not fullness, <gasps> in its fullness as you walk up the main path towards the cathedral at the very end of the main thoroughfare. And the, the stones seem to be in, um, in good shape. The houses themselves seem to, um, to be well taken care of. The people that mill about the streets, some of them chant along, kill the witch, burn them, burn them, for Foltis, for Foltis. Um, walk the one true path, turn away from evil. As some of them simply run into their house and slam the door, closing their windows, afraid of you, in fear of you as William leads you towards the very center of this of this city, a city unlike anything you've ever seen. And in the very center of this, um, of this uh, almost courtyard in front of this gigantic marble cathedral, the very front of it, a large wooden door and above it, a beautiful stained glass window with the, um, with the circular full moon disc and crescent moon of Foltis itself shining in the glass and the lead. Um, the light spilling out into the courtyard, you see the beautiful marble statue of Foltis himself atop a fountain that looks to be an area to procure water and to clean yourself. And it is beautiful and it is pristine as they push you forward directly in front of the steps of the cathedral. I'm gonna get some music. So I fucking hate extroverts. <laughs> <laughs> um, and... <laughs> Seriously? Uh, as fucking you... kids. <laughs> as you, as they push you forward and down onto your hands and knees, William Van, um, William Van Brunt calls out, begging for the Archbishop. We have witches! And everybody erupts into loud, boisterous chanting, witches, burn the witch, kill the minions of the witches. And they chant and chant and chant until finally, the doors of the cathedral spring open. And stepping out from the um, from the illumination within, almost as if wreathed in shadow by the light behind them, a figure thin and tall, investments of a very high priest. As he steps out on onto onto the stairs and looks out over the people, his hat far taller than you would expect, reaching towards the moon. The flames on the torches on the inside of the cathedral flickering and illuminating his back as he steps out and the torches that the townspeople are holding are now able to illuminate his face as what appears to be an older man looks out at all of you and he raises his hands towards the town people. Quiet. My sons and daughters, you have not brought me wishes or minions of witches. You have brought me friends. Friends to the Lord and Lady of all the land, and illuminated in the light of Foltis himself. Put down your weapons. You will do them no harm. And you see as William begins to shrink back into the crowd and slowly fold into the mass of people. And you see for a second as if the Archbishop notices him for a mere second, but he turns his attention back to the flock of people in front of him. Can I spit on him before he tell him about Can I shatter my fucking chains and punch him in the goddamn face? <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. As the DM would say, you can certainly try. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'd like to try. Yeah. Way to go, Billy! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say you're easily able to do that. I will let you do that. And the Archbishop stops for a moment and he allows you to say that. 
as his <laughs> eyes linger on William Van Brunt for just a second, but he seems to allow him to fade off into the distance. Just before he leaves, I cast instant diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing his brown pants. So you don't know if it works. So you don't know well, if it works. You have a feeling tight, it did. So yeah. It creates a, a pressure and everything goes out all right. All of a sudden, you hear a squishing in his shoes as he slowly no. walks away. You have a oh, sense God. of accomplishment. I wish I was like putting your finger there's under a There's a smell of, there's a smell <laughs> of no. shit that drifts in on the breeze. No. That's <laughs> disgusting. I his pants one. are that tight. To I, be fair. I would be on my knees in like, not a mockery of a prayer position, but like what someone who does not pray the, at all would attempting to, to, to do like in, in, in the face of an archbishop. The, the sound of muttering um, is gets louder for a moment, but with his hand still raised, everyone begins to quiet themselves. And, and you hear behind you, um, Foltis be praised. Uh, so sorry, Archbishop. <clears throat> so sorry, so sorry, Archbishop. So sorry, Father, so sorry. As they slowly begin to move away and towards the edges of this, um, of this courtyard, <laughs> um, as he calls out, return their things, unchain them. Lest I have to tell Lord Druskenvold what has befallen his friends. And yeah. you see as a couple of the men move forward and begin to unchain you. Um, one of them, uh, as he's unchaining you, Marius, uh, digs the key in just a little too hard, pressing on your flesh. Um, as, as you hear him say, you're lucky. Yes, yes, I understand. You're very lucky. I, yes, and Don't then, stay out too late. Well, uh, something were to happen. I promise you were here to help. And you see he looks at you with obvious disdain. And I give him a very big toothy smile. He, um, you can smell the liquor on his breath as he, like, jolts back a little bit and he <sighs> slowly unchains you. I am and as, to as he starts though. to walk back, he... Sorry, father. Sorry. But he doesn't, it doesn't, you don't get a sense of um, honesty on his voice as he's continuing to eye you up. And it's easy to tell that there are quite a few of the members of this mob that even though the archbishop is calling you friends, they're not quite sure they agree as they eye you with suspicion. But slowly they begin to move towards the edges. Uh, many of them disperse and head towards their homes, but you notice a lot of them peeking out of windows, looking out of the dark corners in the alleyways as they watch what is to transpire here. My apologies. <laughs> Cyril has been afflicted with the wrath of ungodly women, which is, as I'm sure you I'm thankful you've come. And I promise to keep you safe in this land. For nothing shall befall you when you are under my watchful arm. And he slowly begins to descend the stairs, walking towards you, as he helps you to stand up. He is significantly tall, maybe 6'4", six, 6'5", six, yeah, as he towers over some of you, or meets the eyes of some of you. I tower over there. I just want to know what's up. <laughs> it is late. <clears throat> he turns and looks towards you but says no more. You know, you, you, you're right, Archbishop, it is very late. Um, uh, the name's uh, Briggsy. Uh, do you know where the witch is? Uh, I'd like to get this off. Give me my fucking gun. And I bring the guy next to me and I snatch my you see, bus back. And you I put see, it in my he turns up his nose a little bit at your foul language, but quickly um, wipes the look off of his face as he smiles down at you. As you're handed all of your things. <clears throat> so, dude, so the witch. Uh, we, we were sent here, as you know, to kill a wish. So if you know where she is, we can go do that, and then we can be out of here. You are being hasty. What? It is not safe to hunt the witch this evening. But yes, 
I can give you the instructions you need to kill the witch. But, and he looks at all of you, you must rest. And I have a meeting with the matron of the orphanage, Miss McDuff. But I cannot be late for you. But I can put you up with lodging and make sure you are safe. We are greatly and deeply appreciative of your generosity, Archbishop. Thank you. He reaches out and he grabs your hand. And I am greatly appreciative, appreciative of your assistance. Oh, so absolutely. Yes, of course. That's why we're here. Yes, thank, thank you. Archbishop, do the citizens of Syria roam the lands in search of witches every night? This is a common occurrence. <clears throat> the kin has fallen to madness. The children succumb to sickness. Their crops yield no fruit. They have become desperate. Please do not judge those that suffer the most. We understand. No, 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 no. And, 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 and Archbishop, if, if, uh, if I may call you Archbishop, uh, my name is Old Jericho Stick. You can call me Jericho. Most folk do. It is an honor and a privilege to stand in your presence. Uh, and, and we are just here to kill, to, to assist you with your, your, your witch problem. What we're trying to say is that we understand that fear makes people do unusual things, and it's all right. We're here to help. That's all. A faint smile passes his lips as he looks between all of you. Unlikely heroes, but if you promise to walk the one true path and abide by the rules and seal, I see no reason we cannot be friends. And we cannot help each other to rid this land of that which plagues it. I am eager to learn more about this path and about the ways of Syrup and its holy God. I wish that I were more in my youth, but I tire. I've spent my day tending to the people of Foltis. And after my meeting with the Lady Macduff, I must sleep. But tomorrow we will speak. I will tell you what I know. And I pray that you will bring these witches to an end. Nice plan. That is our intent. Did, did you say uh, Macduff? Like, perhaps is the matron of the orphanage? Yes, matron Maggie Macduff. It seems more of the children have been overcome with sickness. I go to see what Foltus may do. Perhaps, perhaps uh, you may want to uh, go in the morning and perhaps bring your old new friends. I will meet with her in the morning, but I must see to the children tonight. Okay, well, th there, there, there's reason to believe that, uh, that just, just, you know, we should probably talk in the morning about Matron Macduff. Why? Well, there was a situation with children being sent off uh, to a place where they were he not- He raises his hand. I believe I know what you speak, for I know where you have dwelled. Yes. You may accompany me to my meeting in the morning with Matron Maggie Macduff. I will have the Knights Templar get you from the inn. All right, understood. And they're gonna protect us from this fucking crazy people out there. I will have them stationed at the inn all evening long. They will escort you to sleep if you will allow it. Yeah, right. Well, yes, it is, please. Yes, of course, you're, you're very, very hospitable and kind. Archbishop. He looks all he looks at all of you. I am weary and I am tired. I cannot promise I will be more talkative in the morning, but I will have more energy. For now, this has weakened me. Go to sleep. Rest. We will speak tomorrow. And may Foltus guide your path. 
<clears throat> May the light of Foltis guide yours. He nods to each of you individually. Oh, the, the light of Foltis and the true path and blinding light. He um, he doesn't seem put Even off by what one. you're saying, <laughs> but he uh, you once again see that faint smile on his face as he looks to all of you. And again, my apologies. Accepted. Don't worry about it. And I, I, I like clap Briggsy on the back. Skin <laughs> comes, I just growl. Hand gets stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not chunk, I'm sorry. You, you watch as he raises one hand and then the other, and you see marching from either side of the cathedral are lines of uh, three on either side, six total uh, armored guards, the Knights Templar, he referred to, as they begin to flank you. And though none of them speak to you, they begin to um, surround you and then start to usher you along a pathway and deeper into the city. So they're taking us to an inn. They are leading you deeper into the city, and um, as you you watch as um, as the archbishop stands on the steps of the cathedral, and he does look weary. He does look tired. Um, at this point, it is near the, the witching hour, and you imagine if he hadn't been summoned so quickly, he probably, he probably had been preparing for sleep. Um, as he, um, whatever is taking up his time, whatever has happened at the, at the orphanage, as well as your entrance into the city has, uh, riled him from his sleep. Um, and that he probably won't talk so slow the next time you talk to him. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but that he was he was weary and maybe even putting on airs for the mob that uh, had uh, rallied in, in the courtyard but he watches you as you are ushered slowly away and he nods to each of you and smiles as once you begin to make your way out of the courtyard you watch as he walks with purposeful steps uh, down a separate road uh, flanked by six more of these Knights Templar as they lead him through the city or follow him through the city. As these knights begin to walk you through the winding streets um, until you come to a very large uh, stone, uh, almost like a cobble and mortar stone building um, with wooden, with a a well-tended wooden roof. Um, All of the, all of the windows seem to be those uh, those crossed uh, iron windows where the the glasses, uh, leaded glass windows is what I'm looking for. Uh, they're all they all seem to be leaded glass windows, and a warm orange light spills forth from it. Some of the windows in the topmost <clears throat> area seem to be out, but some you can see candlelight flicker. Uh, the rooms above the tavern, and the door itself is open, and there is the sound of merriment and joy spilling up from within. You see a. Uh, you see a sign that seems to have that symbol of Foltis and the words Pathwalker's Rest. Um, this appears to be the inn of this place. As the Knights Templar flank the building and all stand at attention and motion for you to make your way inside. And just as quickly as you do, the room goes silent people sitting at every table and at the bar all turn their heads to look towards you as the majority of them quickly throw coins onto their tables grab their hats and their bags and immediately rush past you and leave none of them saying a word the bartender um and potentially innkeeper standing behind behind the bar a uh an older gentleman, uh, middle to older age, uh, slightly shorter than um, than you've seen, uh, as his long white whiskers um, kind of twitch in apprehension as he looks at all of you and watches as the majority of the the um, uh, the people in the in the inn in the tavern make their way out as he slowly cleans out a glass, but he doesn't make any mo- any motion to uh, prevent you or um, or stop you from entering. And there are, I would say, about six, maybe seven people who remain. But all of them watch you with suspicious eyes as they slowly begin whispering under their breath. It was just our presence. The Knights Templars are outside, The Knights Templar are outside. Okay. I would walk to the bar and say, uh, I I apologize if our presence has disrupted your business. I, I would like a flag and a veil. 
Uh, he looks down at you and you do, you see a sense of suspicion on his face, but then a sense of resolve. It's fine. If the Archbishop says you're all right, then you're all right by me. And he reaches out his hand and he goes to shake yours. Thank you. Samuel Good, I run this place. My name is Samarius Renathian and I promise you we're here to help. Gonna rid us of them witches, huh? Absolutely. I sure hope that's true. Well, it looks like your room, board, food, and everything else is on the church, so... What? No, no, and no. And he passes you a flag and a mead. No, how, how Enjoy much for your this? stay. For, please, how much for this? Yeah. I wouldn't deny the kindness of the Archbishop, but neither should you. Um, I would look around the bar. Is there is there any kind of, like, a tip jar or anything? I would say there's a there's a small barrel where you see uh, a handful of coins, but not many. It doesn't look like many people tip. Maybe they don't have the means to, or maybe it's been already cleared out for the night, but there's not much in there. I, I would very gratefully uh, accept my flagon and discreetly walk past this barrel and drop ten gold pieces. Ooh. It's his platoon. It just goes blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's gross, Derek. He, Go home. We don't like you. <laughs> he's definitely owned this place for a long time, and your kindness does not go unnoticed by him as you see a slight smile grace his face. I find a seat. Thank you. And, uh, and I just give him a nod as I go up, uh, enjoy my flagon. Ooh, uh, hello there, uh, sir. Uh, you met my friend, uh, Sir Marius. Uh, my name is Old Jericho Sticks. You can call me Jericho, most folk do. I, I know you don't have many patrons, but if you need a uh, a, a pro bono uh, musical performance, I am a bit of a, uh, a tune smith, and I play this here banjo, and I do a little bit of singing, a little bit of warbling. Not great, but it, it's enough. If it would make you happy to play, then I say play. There ain't many in here to hear it, but I'd enjoy it. Well, I, I'll, I'll talk to my friends who, I think I'm feeling tired. It's just, feeling tired is a little new to me. Uh, sleepy is a little new, so maybe we'll go to bed or I'll play. To, maybe those, do those fine gentlemen look like they're looking for a tune? I'll look over, do they seem like they're looking for a tune? They very clearly seem like they're not looking for a two. Oh, oh. You see as <laughs> what had been two sets of three people getting together are, that were together and mumbling under their breath, three of them have slowly more moved over to the larger table and they've all congregated over there in the farthest corner of the tavern away from you um, as they're looking at you and mumbling. They are, um, it's very clear that some of them are inebriated. Um, as he, um, as Samuel Good looks out around all of you and he slowly tosses out a key. Well, that's for your room. You can find it upstairs. The number's there on the key. There's some rules. There's no whoring. Don't have prostitutes and cereal. So if that's your thing, it's not here. You understand? Oh no, we would never, we never dream of that. Of course. There's a, there's a two drink maximum. There's no, there's no drunkenness in Cyril, and you see as his eyes linger on the table in the corner. I can't get There drunk. shouldn't be, at the very least. It is a crime, it is a sin, and those that do it, and his voice raises, will be punished if they're caught. Understood. We all walk the one true path. Stay good, stay kind, commit no sins, and you'll fit in right here with me. Don't have no trouble from us. This will be enough for me, then. I'll have some food sent over the kitchen's clothes, but I'm sure we can scrounge up something. You like beans? Not picky. Ooh, right. boy, I, I very much care for beans. <laughs> Did you say room? Yeah, room. Oh, do, don't you have any, like, maybe two rooms, perhaps, with the lady tags? Not why. tonight. We're quite, <laughs> fill, we're quite full up. We weren't expecting a party of your size, but... It's the largest room we've got. We'll make do, it's all right. Okay. Should be enough beds for a lot of you. You can just put me in a, a room closet. I'm fine on the floor, I'll, I'll be all right. Uh, rum, please. He quickly makes you a drink and passes it to you. Oh, you have rum, wow. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Did I, did I get a goblet of wine? Yes, you did. I did. Whatever it is that you want to drink, you're able to get. And um, you see as he disappears into a side room and comes out uh, soon after, which with what appears to be a watered-down um, meat and bean stew. 
Ooh. We have a, some wine and a kamikaze shot. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you are able, you're able to, he, he keeps himself, Samuel Classy Good does, for, for the most part, as he stays behind the bar, and you see that he does stop giving drinks to the men in the corner after two drinks, and as they walk by you, they make snide comments, and you hear them muttering the word witches and witches servant to you, but none of them actually um, engage with you. Occasionally you feel, you hear something and see something hit the table as they toss bits of food towards you and then pretend like they hadn't thrown it. Um, and occasionally you see as they pull out from under the table what appears to be a skein of drink. They have uh, pilfered alcohol from somewhere else and are continuing to drink past their two drinks. <laughs> But Samuel Good, who does seem to notice it, doesn't seem to get involved. It's none of his business, and he keeps to himself. Oh, boy. Um, could I, uh, because I have a familiar, and I suppose I could use this mechanically, uh, instead of just berating me, uh, <laughs> I say, now, now, Virgil, I know that I haven't asked a lot from you in the past several, several days. Why don't you stay outside, and can you just keep your, your weird, gross eyes out for other weird, gross animals? And just keep an eye out for anything that might be centipede-like or anything on this here dagger. And I'll show him the dagger and 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 open a window and for to fly out. Um, and he can talk to you while he's outside. Uh, no. So he within within, within, within a hundred feet, feet within a hundred feet. Right. Within, so if he's like outside, so he's on like the roosting road. on the building, and I'm a hundred feet away. Yeah. 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 Uh, I would say he he gives you a rough um, he gives you a rough playback of what he sees. The Knights Templar seem to be uh, scouting the entire place. They occasionally change positions and walk the streets. Uh, they send people inside. You see, a, they they occasionally uh, find a. Um, My head snaps back. They occasionally find a drunk and warn them quickly to get inside, lest they um, lest they pay the price of their sin. Um, they, but they watch. And you had mentioned the things on the on the dagger. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and he mentioned. I will say, Virgil tells you that the um, there is there appears to be. Well, Virgil might know this because he's a bird. Yeah, I'll say he does. A pigeon ship that coats the um, the turrets and the boards of uh, the roof of the inn. And he begins to notice that there's quite a bit of it uh, on the other roofs. As if, though you don't see them here now, that pigeons do roost here. Which may or may not be unusual. Yeah. I mean, it's a city. You know that right. pigeons totally are no city vermin. <laughs> well, I mean, and, that's, and that's about all that he has to tell well, you. Well, there's no, there's no gross animals, but there's pigeons. Right. There's pigeons. There's pigeon shit, I that's assume. That's a great move, given what's happening in the last 20 years. I mean, those are gross animals. I mean, you're talking about gross animals all the time, and then you see evidence of pigeons, and you're like, oh, don't worry, there are no gross animals? They're not as gross as all that. Uh, I'm kind of with Briggsy on this one. I think he's right. Pigeons uh, that get qualifies a bad as a gross animal. They're better than weasels with faces. Only, only slightly. Well, I guess we knew what we were getting into. At, at some point in the evening, I would, I would get tired of being having food thrown at us and I would go and I would uh, start talking to the gentleman we don't have to argue this <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I would cast lesser restoration on them in order to destroy their drunkenness oh. uh, take away take away what they've spent all evening working up uh, to end because of the one true path thing what it is and how important uh, the guiding light of focus is uh, I... <laughs> they... They sober up immediately, and you can feel the anger coming off of them as they mutter curses under their breath, and one of them makes a motion towards you, but the other ones grab them and hold them still, and one of them looks directly at you. You'll get what's coming to you, don't you worry, little lady. They're within the earshot? And he spits at your feet. Let's head to bed, gentlemen. And they all get up and you hear the sliding and grinding of the chairs as they all exit the inn. And as they do, they watch you and they look at you. Even you can feel that the the anger that they had felt and the suspicion that they felt has been amplified with your casting of Lesser Restoration on them. Thank you. And I know that I would have to use more than one for per person. So yeah. let me know if I need to spend more than one. Six. Okay, I, I spend all of my spells. 
<laughs> That's all we're gonna mention. I uh, I'll lay my like? my cup of rum on fire and I'll say, "Move for us." I'm all down it. I'd be lying if I said I didn't want a few more of these. <laughs> you, Jorgen, were you were you asking a question? Uh, just if they were within earshot. Yes, they were within earshot. Yeah. You well, could hear them. But they were well, choosing they, to they mutter were... under their breath, okay. but once once Lethica lesser restoration to them, uh, they made it very loud that they that she would pay the price. Uh, well, probably, like, if they're looking at us while they're leaving, I would, uh, like, if they're throwing food at us, I would look for, like, a chicken bone if it's on me or some sort of bone. Sure. I would, like, take it off, stare them dead in their eyes, and then just eat the bone. <laughs> just consume it. They just stare teeth. right at them. Yeah. You you see uh, like two of them you see two of them jump back and then they begin whispering to each other and nodding, uh, and we're in a tavern. We're in a tavern. Yeah, you're in a tavern, so this works. Uh, arguing as as they they speak to each other under their breath and they as they all leave they turn back and look at you one more time and you see almost a look of devilish glee on one of their faces as they exit and dart into the shadows. Evening, gentlemen. Have a nice sleep. It is humans are all want to do. I hate to suggest it so early, but maybe we should follow suit and just head to bed ourselves. I, I, I could sit here all night, but we need our rest and we have a lot ahead of us tomorrow. If, if this were the prime material plane, it would be like three in the morning. I'm, I'm ready for bed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eager to get to tomorrow, kill this witch and get the hell out of here. Well, I'm going to have my second drink. You've Man, already I'm... had your second drink. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Samuel, I would, I, would have, I would have a shot of rum, please. And he hands you a shot of rum. I rum. think I will be going to bed, and I leave my rum on the table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Samuel turns a blind eye. Oh, Samuel's so sweet. Well done. <laughs> I'll just see it kind of like spit, dribble out of my Get routine. some rest. I hope you have a good night. You let me know if and he looks towards the door. I'm sure they've got it covered, but you let me know if you need anything. Uh, likewise. If, if there's anything that you need from us, please let us know. And thank you again. You can get rid of these witches and bring our lovely town back to what it was before the suspicion and the anger took hold in the hearts of these men. I'd thank you kindly. Of course, Mr. Samuel, and thank you for the hospitality. We we appreciate you perhaps sacrificing a bit of your business. Eh, hey, they'll come back. There's nowhere else to go. <laughs> well, I was going to play them. I feel like I just came up with a jaunty tune they might enjoy, but maybe maybe tomorrow evening. <laughs> All right. Let's get some sleep. Sweet yeah. dreams. Okay. That's just the sound of the playlist. <laughs> oh my god, it's a Hellboy 2! <laughs> <laughs> and with that, you make your way up to the one large room, and there there are enough beds and places for you to sleep, and though it is a large room, it's, it's almost like a suite. There are adjoining rooms, mm. and there is a spot for the ladies to have their own privacy, and a spot for um, the men to uh, find rest, there... if you would like to split up in such a fashion. I'll just... And is there anything you'd like to do before you get to bed? I'll just kind of prop up. I'll stand right in here if there's enough oh, space. Oh, look, there's a cloak all... closet. A, a, a cloak closet? I mean a coat closet. Oh. <laughs> if you would like to. A cloak to. closet. I, I suppose that would be, you know, a little more comfortable. I can I can stretch out in here. There we go. Okay. <laughs> uh, I guess, you know, I normally have a stasis, but I, I'll, I guess I'll sleep again. You all feel that sense of tiredness overcoming you. You now understand a little bit why the DM made the choice to have the um, the Archbishop talk so slowly, because it's very late and people are very tired, <laughs> including the DM. <laughs> well, this, this is a mighty fine coat closet and I think I'll enjoy a nice sleep. What a, what, what a, what a fun thing. Are there enough beds for us? Yes. Or? Oh. When you say private. Easy peasy. Do you you sense, would not be uh, private from Farron, but you'd be private from the gentleman. Um. Good good night, Farron. <laughs> you need some prayers. I'm going. I'm going to. I'm going to pray now. But I am going to keep my back to you. Please do not be offended. I'll uh, get down on two knees, and since it's been 
more than a full day. Normally, I would have the ritual of praying each day, but didn't feel comfortable doing that on the uh, outside dirt of the crooked house. Uh, I would finally remove my mask, making sure that no one could see, and then go through my ritual, speak my prayer words, and for the sake of brevity, we'll say that that's, that's all I do. Yeah, so you do that. And then I get to sleep after we're turning the mask. Would the anybody bed. else like to do anything before bed? I would just take off my armor and set everything by, by my bed and, and settle yeah. in. If it's anything unusual, then what you I would like, I would go and like communicate <laughs> with Virgil and just basically have him keep out uh, uh, keep an eye out for gross pigeons. Mm-hmm. And if there's any weird pigeon, uh, weird especially weird looking pigeon, to basically you know Helena. come wake us up. Yep. Right. Uh, I would just find the biggest bed that I can, and I would try to pass out immediately. Uh, my first time in a real bed and. A and at least it, a few nights. it is easy for all of you to fall asleep as the days travel, the horrors that you witnessed, and the um, what felt like near death experience as you were come upon by a mob of fanatics. It has exhausted you as you close your eyes and you are able to find sleep. But it is not a restful sleep as you all begin to dream of a musical start. Marius, you find yourself walking through the basement of an old abandoned mill. The ground beneath your feet clearly desecrated ground, surrounded by coffin after coffin after coffin. You take your shield and you smash into it and you see that what lies beyond is vampire spawn after vampire spawn as wrath begins to billow up inside of you. As you slice head from body, rending one, two, three, four, upturning coffin after coffin after coffin, you get towards the edge of the room, you open another one and out rises the form of a child vampire spawn. And in pure wrath, you slice the head from its body as you begin to find smaller and smaller coffins, all of them vampire spawn. As you you sever their heads, as you slice into them, no care whatsoever for the age of these vampires consumed with wrath. And as you see, there's a battle that rages around you as this entire thing begins to go up in flames, but you're so consumed in rage, you don't care as you slice through this one and that one. Child, adult, woman, it does not matter. As all of a sudden, the entire thing goes up in flames and you with it. As your skin begins to melt from your bones, you are un, um, you are unaffected as you are consumed with rage. You fall to your knees as the, the metal of your armor begins to um, cause the skin of your flesh to melt away even quicker. As you scream with rage and continue to rend head from body. Briggsy. You see yourself in the ruins of a temple, surrounded by idols and relics of a culture that you are unfamiliar with, and you are filled with greed. As you begin to stuff your pack full of gems and jewels and diamonds, you are ready to completely clean this place out. These things can be sold for so much money. You are a rich man. The ship you could buy with all of this. And as you're ready to leave, you see it. The glint of gold catches your eye, a gold in the sun. As you look up, a towering, gigantic, crocodilian statue. And in its eyes, two giant gemstones. Your greed is overpowering as you begin to scale this thing, as you climb upwards. And with your dagger, you pry forth one of the gems and put it in your pocket. You feel the statue waver under you as you place the gem into your bag. You are overburdened, but you don't care. That other gemstone will be yours. As you move towards it and you begin to pry it, the statue jolts a little bit, but you're able to get leverage as you yank the gemstone out. And as you hold it in your hands, the statue begins to fall and you with it. And as you hit the ground, the statue falls atop you, smashing you into paste. Your greed, your end. 
Farron. So good. The glow of blue runes on the standing stones illuminate the forest around you as a massive bear is consumed in heart's blight. A circle of druids dance around it, performing the ritual that you are so familiar with. But in this ritual, there are two empty spaces. For though you can see the dancing lights far off in the distance, you're not there performing the ritual. You're in the throes of passion, overcome with lust. Two feminine fawn bodies tumble in the rotting, uh, or not the rot, in the, um, in the slowly decaying leaves on the fallen floor of this dark forest as you wrap yourselves around each other. No thought for the ritual that's happening far off as you laugh and moan in pleasure and in glee. And as you open your eyes, as your arms wrap around the one you love, you feel her flesh give way as her skin decays in your hands, the empty eye sockets of her head lifeless, the flesh rotting, your fingers sinking into the putrid form as you hold your dead lover. Jericho, the sound of music, dance and love, as you peek in to a happy barn filled with laughter and life, as you watch from the outskirts, envious of the love and friendship that you see within as halflings dance around what looks like it could be a maypole, as they sing and celebrate the love of two beautiful halflings as they share in the, um, as they sh share in the joy of what is clearly a wedding, family and friends all in attendance. And you watch, longing, hoping for that kind of friendship, that sort of family, as all of a sudden darkness descends. And as you look up, you see crows swarms and swarms of crows as they descend into the barn and into the windows as they begin to pick apart the flesh of these halflings, picking out their eyeballs, ripping into their intestines. The laughter and song now replaced with the sounds of agonized screaming as the friends and family of this married couple are ripped apart in front of you. Nothing more than a mass of bloody mess as the flock descends upon you. You're covered and consumed, and though you can't feel the same pain, darkness, and almost as if you're watching from far above, where once had been Jericho, is nothing but a lone, rusty bolt. Lethica, a full moon looms over a huge city on a hill, a village that clearly had once been the home to a worshiping group to Saluna. But now, Cloaked figures roamed the streets. Symbols of the disk of night dot everything. At the top of the city, a cavernous cathedral to Shar now stands. And in the dark depths of it, seated upon a throne, you sit. And as you look out over your flock, as these dark figures bow down in prayer, you swell with pride. And then you realize their faces, which should be masked, are purely blank. No faces reside on these beings, just a fleshy blankness as they bow and bend. But they don't serve you. They serve Shar. And you are but an imposter in this land. And as you look on in pride, you feel fear as they descend on you and begin to rip you limb from limb, an unholy idol. Yorgrim, you walk through a valley of darkness, the weight of the clan stone on your back as it gets heavier and heavier, and you get more and more tired. You hear the voices of your friends and family, everyone you knew, as they begin to blame you for their deaths chanting at you, telling you you will never finish this task. You carry the weight of your friends and family because you did this. 
You are the one to blame. You did not act. And you feel sloth. You feel tired. You feel exhausted. Your knees buckle as you fall to the ground. As the weight of a thousand ghosts begin to weigh down on you. And you begin to claw at your own grave, pulling apart the earth. You need rest. That's all you want. Let their deaths be in vain, for you shall sleep. Without your shovel, you dig your own grave. And with a yawn, you bury yourself deep within the earth. As you look up towards the moonless night, you're slowly covered by the by the ghosts of your friends, their hands spilling the earth over you as your eyes flutter and you feel exhaustion overtake you. As the sounds of their chanting, you did this. You are at fault, slowly fades, and you find sleep. You are jolted awake as the sound of a door slams. You can hear shouts and cries and junk, drunken yells as all of a sudden you feel in the darkness, you, you reach out as you feel hands on your wrists. Lethica, you hear a voice. I told you you'd pay. Witch, as you feel something wet on your face as someone spits against your cheek and you're wrenched out of bed. All of you feel this as in the darkness, you're pulled from your beds and dragged down the stairs. Those six ruffians are not six any longer. They're 10 as they drag you out into the main floor of the inn. You begin to hear noise outside as if the town itself is kind of waking as you take punch after punch after punch as these men in your tiredness begin to beat the ever living shit out of you. You feel blood pooling dear this, down the side of your face as one of them rises over you and you see the, you see the uh, face of William Van Brunt as he calls out to drag you outside. And they begin, they begin to drag you. You feel weak, almost drugged, as if you drank something you shouldn't have. Your limbs don't have the same kind of mo movement you would expect from them. You try to call on magics that are familiar to you, but you are unable to utter the words as your speech is slightly uh, garbled and, uh, and, and as you stutter out the incantations, as you're dragged out and where there should be the six Knights Templar, there is not. Oh, boy. It is nothing but darkness, as once again they begin to pummel into you. I need you all to roll a perception check for me, please. Oof. Oh, a natural 20 there. Virgil, you son of a bitch. Nice. Well done. <laughs> oh, I guess I don't only grow Is that perception? Vision. Yes. Oh, oh, I did okay. Uh, that would be a 26 for Jericho. Not that uh, high. Jericho Seven. Specs. 18. 20. Perception. Mm -hmm. 18. It's, it's going to be more than 20 for me. Uh, anyone who rolled uh, below 15 or below, you would not hear this. I would say those of you that rolled above, you hear a loud crunching from far off in the distance, almost a strange slamming and breaking of stone. Something large is coming. And as you look off into the, into the shadows of the streets that flock the area outside of the inn, you see a flash of the colors of the Knights Templar as one of them runs off clearly paid to stop their watch for a Bastards. small amount of time as you you see that let me make sure you see that William from Van Brunt seems to hear uh, this noise as well as he shrinks towards the back and lets you continue to be pummeled by these 10 men as they're beating into you. Yorgrim, yet again, you feel some of your teeth fly from your mouth as you Dang try it. to move against them, but your limbs are sleepy. They're tired. The, the vision of your dream still floating at the edges of your subconscious as you try to move against them, but can't. You feel like you're on the edge of, of unconsciousness as they pummel into you, blood spilling out of your mouth as they call out, witches, uh, tools of the witch, you will die here. We will rid this town of you. As all of a sudden you all hear it, the loud crunch overhead and a guttural, almost like roar and the sound of scraping. This, whatever this is, is huge and it is right above you. 
all of these men for a second look up and you see a look of terror on their face as the one that was in front of you, Lethica, the one that you remember, you can barely see through the slits of your swollen, bru- um, beaten face. You can see him, the one that spit in your face, the one that told you that you would pay. As all of a sudden, your eyes are completely covered in blood. As you are all spattered with blood, as down from the ceiling of the tavern, this gigantic, part gargoyle, part human man, far too large to exist, jumps squarely on top of this man and completely smashes him to paste as he turns and looks towards all of the men that are brutally beating you in the streets of Cyril. And he and he calls out, Drunkards, sin! As he smashes at one of them and grabs him with his gigantic hand. You hear them all yell, but their, their voices are clearly overcome with the sound of drink. Pay for sins! As he opens what appears to be four giant cages strapped to his back, as he wrenches them open and throws them in, and he closes them and locks them with his large, dexterous hands, and he he sniffs and smells the street. Sinners, pay! And that is where we'll end the session. Holy fuck! Holy shit! Okay. <laughs> Yeah, what sure. The Before we do anything else, though, Kimma's resubscribed. Oh, thank you, Kimma. Oh, thank you, thank you, Kimma. Oh, thank you, Kimma. Oh, whole year. Big old year. Kimma. Oh, thank you. It's amazing. Thank you, thank you. We're not done. We're going to do Vamps and Chill. We're going to discuss this whole section. Um, but a couple other things. Join our Discord if you're new. Yes. Uh, we just launched our Patreon, and it's the best way to support us. So if you want a whole bunch of extra perks, then you want the fancy little like diamond gem next to your name in Twitch chat. Boy, do uh, I join our Patreon? It's a lot of fun. And um, we will be back next Thursday, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Next Thursday, we will be back next Thursday. So um, we're gonna cut over, not in the stream. We're not gonna go anywhere, but I'm gonna. T- Unrecord and then start recording again. Yeah, so we're not around. gonna go anywhere. Thanks for sticking around, Heaven. Thanks for sticking Thank around. you. I'm glad you yeah. finished assignments. Uh, two assignments. Let's if go. you're not gonna stick around, good night, everybody. Cutting good night.